I don't know. I'm <clears throat> I'm on an iPad, so I've got to flip mm -hmm. through. Um, I see Tim Buckaloo. I see Annie Koenigsberg. I see Gary Kessler. Um, I, I don't know if anyone else is here. Gary's here as well, Jordan. Okay. Oh, he is. Okay. So, well, as long as we've got four, then we've yep. got a quorum. Yep. Okay. All right, that sounds good. So why don't we start off? I'll just go through my um, legal script here uh, for the Hopkinton ConCom. Then I'll hand it over um, to uh, Andy. Oh, you Andy. guys. Can, uh, I'll hand it over to Andy. He can do his, and then we'll open it up to the Mass DOT for their presentation. Um, so as a preliminary matter, this is Jeff Barnes. Chair of the Hopkinton Conservation Commission, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipate on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members of the commission, please respond uh, present when I state your name. Melissa? Present. Carrie? I don't think Carrie joined us. Uh, Jim? Present. Ed, I don't believe has joined us. Janine? Present. And I don't think Ted has joined us. And this is Jeff Barnes. So we have a quorum, there's four members. Uh, this is an open meeting of the Hopkinton Conservation Commission and the Westboro Conservation Commission to start. It's being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. Uh, for this meeting, the conservation, the Hopkins and Conservation Commission is convening by video conference via Zoom, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Additionally, the meeting may also be broad is also being broadcast broadcast by HCAM through its platform. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that others may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials have been provided to the members of this body are available on the town's website via the web meeting calendar and the town website. Uh, we are now Turning to the first item on the agenda, before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, the chair, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will invite board members to provide any comment, questions, or motion. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name and address before speaking. If members wish to engage with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. After items after members have spoken, excuse me, the chair will afford public comments as follows. The chair will first assess members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and address. Once the chair has a list of public comments, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be by roll call vote. I'll call each member of the commission, at which point you'll state your name and your vote. Okay. Go ahead, Andy. I don't know if you need to uh, uh, do a similar. Uh... Technically, yes. So, <clears throat> uh, the July hearing of the Westboro Conservation Commission special hearing is in session. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15th 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Westboro Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found at 
www.town.westboro.ma.us slash sites slash Westboro MA slash file slash uploads COVID-19 meeting info one PDF. No person in attendance of, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Towns of Westboro's website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive recording of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting at www.town.westboro.ma.us conservation commission slash news slash conservation commission Note meeting information. Um, would you like me to read uh, the legal notice? Yeah, why don't, you, why don't you do that, Andy, and then I need to read it uh, okay. for Hopkinton when you're done. Thank you. All right. Legal notice of public hearing. Notice of intent. Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division I-495 I-90 Interchange, Westboro, Massachusetts. In accordance with the Lutton's Protection Act, Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Westboro Conservation Commission will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, July 14th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order, this meeting will be of the Westboro Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation. To view the meeting, please go to westborotv.org slash public dash channel slash live dash stream dash public. The commission will consider a notice of intent filed by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division to reconfigure the I-495, I-90 interchange. The project is located in the right of way of both I-495 and I-90 roadways, approximately one mile in each direction from the interchange of I-495, I-90. Okay, thank you, Andy. And I'll uh, open the public hearing on behalf of the Con Hopkinton Conservation Commission. Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 14th, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. virtually online to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Mass DOT to reconfigure the existing I-495, I-90 interchange with associated site work. The location is I-495 and the I-90 highway interchange. And if you have someone from MassDOT who wants to discuss the project, that would be great. Jeff, that would be Mark For Forbert. I think he's okay. on the chain. Mark. Uh, uh, Ian, I think Ryan McNeil from MassDOT is gonna introduce first uh, for, for MassDOT. If you Ryan is on the line, hopefully. Yep, I started and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Mark for the meat of the presentation. Um, I will mention that I've gotten a couple of messages in the last couple of minutes. It seems like some potential attendees might still be on hold and trying to get into the meeting. Yep, I'm, I'm just um, letting them in now. I apologize. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. So uh, much for having us tonight. My name is Ryan McNeil. I am the project manager for the I-90, I-495 interchange reconstruction project. Um, thank you to the commissioners from both towns and Mr. McAdam and Mr. McCarran for facilitating. Um, we tend to think of projects along town lines, but resource areas clearly do not. So I think there's a tremendous benefit for us to at least have this initial presentation on a project, a project wide standpoint um, to both commissions. So uh, thank you to both commissions for allowing us to do this tonight. Uh, we have a, uh, it's a, it's a considerable size project. We have a, a lot of environmental specific information to present tonight. We're not gonna go into a lot of depth on the project purpose and need or design development. Um, MassDOT has had 20, 20 plus public presentations 
on the project over the last years. Um, those are all preserved on MassDOT's web page if, if you're interested in uh, going back through hours and hours and hours of presentation was there. Um, in addition, last Thursday, we um, published a virtual design public hearing. Uh, that's also available on MassDOT's web. MassDOT design public hearings. Click on the first Google result and scroll down a little bit. Uh, you'll be able to find that presentation. That presentation and many of the ones we've done over the last couple of years have a great background for um, why the interchange currently exists as it does, what has changed to allow us to reconfigure, um, and a lot of the alternative analysis, purpose and need, projected benefits of the, um, of the selected alternative. Uh, all of that information is there and easily available. That 25% that design public hearing that I mentioned that we uh, pu published or posted last Thursday is currently accepting public comments uh, and I think will be through 23rd. So if our members of the commission or members of the public, again, want to go and, and get some background on the project or have comments or questions or input, on the project that aren't uh, your commissions, uh, I encourage folks to go watch those presentations. There are instructions at the end of the presentation on how to submit uh, written comments or to MassDOT um, on the project. So uh, some great resources there on the back of the project. So we're not gonna, we could talk for hours and need and design here and that's not really the intent. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Fobert with TetraTech. Uh, Mark, kind of step-by-step, step, the, 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 the basics of the NOI application, the environmental resources, uh, the change, and uh, mitigation ideas. So with that, Mark? Yep. Um, hopefully I can share my screen. Um, can I request... Uh, some sc uh, screen sharing. Yeah, Jeff, I, I can't see a icon for me to share it either. Oh, I, I just got the ability to share it. So good. We'll run with that. <laughs> Screen two. Do you see a beautiful aerial photo of the project area, hopefully? Not yet. No, not yet. I am sharing. Let me make sure I am. Uh, it's outlining green. We got it now. Yeah, there you go. Got it. Okay. Uh, which um, are you seeing? Just an air photo? Or are you seeing an air photo with a? Are you seeing a PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, yeah, it's an air photo, Mark. Sorry, um, I was on mute, but. Uh, yeah, you're good. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to run through a quick PowerPoint show, and I'm going to uh, take a take you through some of the uh, the NOI plans. Um, of course, this is the uh, view looking down I-495 South uh, from the Cumberland Farms property down the highway. Uh, here we have the view down I-90 eastbound. Uh, we have the Sudbury River, Cumberland Farms in the distance. This is one of the loop ramps where we're proposing mitigation uh, and the Roosevelt uh, neighborhood in the foreground. And then finally, this is the old uh, toll plaza area and looking up 495 northbound. Um, 
This project needs a wetland variance, and this is the wetland variance process. Uh, we filed the notices of intent with the Conservation Commission. Uh, each commission will have to deny the project with conditions. Uh, MassDOT will then appeal that denial and request a superseding order, which DP again has to deny because we exceed the thresholds. And then we file our uh, variance and start that process. Um, I'll quickly go over the contents of the NOI filing. Uh, it includes a description of the resource areas, description of the project, wetland resource impacts, stormwater, and mitigation. It's got uh, several appendices. Uh, Appendix A is a vernal pool survey. We did four years of vernal pool surveys uh, throughout the site. Uh, there is one vernal pool located uh, within um, the project area that will be affected, and that is uh, VP14. We'll take a look at that one later. We also did Appendix B, which is the Atlantic White Cedar Inventory. Uh, that's a inventory of the existing Atlantic White Cedar trees. We did their health, their size, and things like that, so we can incorporate those uh, into our wetland mitigation plan. We're trying to figure out where they grow best. Appendix C are your notice of intent plans, which include uh, wetland impact plans, wetland restoration plans, drainage plans, and landscape plans. There's basically four sets in there. Uh, Appendix D are the stream, is a existing stream crossing assessment. There were 35 crossings identified, and we uh, documented their structural conditions and their connectivity for wildlife passage. Uh, Appendix E is a wildlife habitat assessment. That is an assessment of the impacted wetlands using DEP's criteria. Appendix F is a bordering land subject to flooding determination. Uh, in uh, Westboro, there's a zone A's, which don't have elevations associated with them. Uh, in order to get the correct boundary of bordering land subject to flooding, we have to do a, uh, a modeling to uh, establish that elevation, and that's been done, and I'll be going over that in a few seconds. Uh, Appendix G is our compensatory flood storage analysis, where we have to uh, show how we mitigate for all lost uh, uh, flood storage that was located in bordering land subject to flooding. Appendix H is our stream crossing uh, impact assessment report. It documents the impacts and improvements to the crossings within the project limit. And Appendix I is your standard stormwater management plan, which uh, is uh, currently there's no BMPs to provide uh, recharge or water treatment at this site. Uh, all new uh, development in purpose areas will comply with all the uh, DEP uh, stormwater standards, all 10 of them. Uh, Redevelopment uh, in pervious areas uh, will conform with Mass DEP stormwater standards two, three, four, five, and six to the maximum extent practicable. Uh, continuing with the appendices, Appendix J is a draft wetland mitigation plan. It's a mitigation plan based on the Army Corps of Engineers uh, guidance. Uh, includes a monitoring report and includes complete wetlands functions and values assessment for all of those. Uh, impacted wetlands. Angus K is your landscape restoration specification, which includes your planting requirements and your seed mix details. And Appendix L is a Whitehall Brook no rise analysis, which documents that the proposed work will not cause an increase in flood levels. These are the project wide wetland impacts. Uh, the important ones here, BLSF, we have approximately 58,000 cubic feet of flood storage lost, but that's mitigated with approximately 96,000 cubic feet of flood storage. Uh, inland banks is approximately 1,600 uh, square feet, per, uh, linear feet, sorry, uh, permanently impacted, and that's replaced with uh, 1,300 uh, linear feet. Uh, BBW, we lose about 85,000 square feet, but we mitigate with 295,000 uh, square feet. And land underwater, 8,200 square feet of permanent impacts, and replaced with approximately 8,900 square feet of uh, mitigation. There's also 505 cubic yards of dredge, which I'll go over when we get to those areas. Um, the impacts today have been reduced uh, to the greatest extent practical with the use of walls and bridges. The uh, red and white striped uh, lines are uh, proposed walls, uh, which are keep the, uh, they, re they retain the wetland fill, the, the fill for the roadway so they don't spill into the wetlands. Uh, they also have a lot of bridges out here that are proposed to reduce wetland impacts, which are shown in yellow. And here's the results of our uh, Appendix A, which is our vernal pool survey. Uh, these are the vernal pool surveys that meet the biological and physical criteria. Again, that was based on the four years of vernal pool surveys. And again, vernal pool 14 is the only one affected by the project. 
I'll be showing you that as we go through the plans. There's that appendix F, which is a BLSF determination I discussed. Uh, it's only in Westboro, and again, was required because the firm map only had a zone A and not an AE, and it was based on a HydroCAD model. Uh, that original uh, from the FEMA map, you can see in green, uh, that was the original zone A. The pink crosshatch is the revised, uh, corrected border and land subject to flooding boundary. This is Appendix G, the compensatory flood storage. Uh, the BLSF impacts occur between elevations 274 and 282. Uh, storage will be provided to same elevations and mostly within the same reach. Uh, and we are going to reconnect the historic floodplain by removing the floodplains. You can see these are the reaches, reach W1, W2, et cetera, around the project area. Excuse me. And then the pink areas are the proposed mitigation uh, flood storage, and they're located scattered throughout the project, as you can see. Mark, what do you mean by reach? Can you just explain that, please? Sure. Uh, it's separated by, um, DP's got a definition of reach. That's on the call, too. We've got parent work I work with. But it's, uh, it's, it's a segment of the river. So we have reach W1 here, which is the lower segment here. And then the segment on this side of the highway goes into reach W2 in this area, S1A for Sudbury River. And then we have another reach over here. Okay, so it's not it's not like watershed associated. It's just it is similar. To, I mean, it's it, it's it's an area that uh, that's it, confined, it, and it's how it's confined to each of those areas. Okay, and we have to we have to have unrestricted access to that when we do our mitigation. Okay, great, thank you. That's why the design shows up each reach and each hopefully this, each solution. Uh, this is the stream crossing. Um, the existing stream crossings out there. Initially, 35 culverts were identified. Uh, we're proposing to replace three. We're extending one with improvements. Uh, three of the culverts didn't exist. Three served only runway uh, uh, runoff only, and three culverts uh, were removed and naturally restored. Those are the ones in the mitigation area here and here. Uh, I'll be, you'll be seeing those later in the presentation. Uh, our biggest stream crossing replacement is the uh, Crossing number three, which is Whitehall Brook, uh, located in Hawkington. Uh, the existing uh, crossing or uh, culvert is shown in gray, approximately 15 feet wide. Uh, the proposed is shown in blue. It's approximately 30 feet wide, which equals a bank full width. Um, it's going to increase the openness ratio. Uh, right now, there's not another, there's no natural substrate material within the crossing. We're going to add some natural substrate um, into that crossing. We're also going to smooth the, uh, smooth the profile as a big drop as you go into that culvert, which is going to be fixed uh, when we go through it, when we uh, replace it. Again, that's, that's a 30 by 7 open box culvert, 170 feet in length. Pedix I is your stormwater management plan. Uh, eight infiltration basins are proposed and one infiltration swale. Uh, the, the yellow are the infiltration basins located in both Hopkinton and Westboro. And the orange is your uh, just an infiltration swale located up 495 on the northern end uh, in Westboro. And uh, the treatment target to mitigate impacts from the same sub-basin, uh, we use a macro approach which looks at the project as a whole. And um, new development is considered an increase in impervious area and treated as such. Uh, Appendix J is our wetland uh, mitigation. Uh, or very excited about our opportunity we have out here is to remove the uh, historic fill that was uh, placed during when the highway was constructed in the ACEC. It's, uh, our mitigation is located in the vicinity of the impacts. It's near streams, wetlands, the ACC flood boundaries. Uh, it can serve multiple functions, BBW, BLSF, stormwater treatment, habitat. Um, it increases the buffer between the roadways and the existing ACEC and allows for wetland restoration in both towns. Here's an overview of that mitigation. Uh, we have uh, mitigation site A over here, the uh, northern loop ramp, and mitigation site B, the eastern loop ramp. You can see uh, uh, this is some of the Atlantic white cedars that were inventoried. It will be, in, uh, it'll be uh, integrated into that plan. And we're proposing to, uh, this is wetland mitigation site A, the northwest or northern loop ramp. Uh, we propose to mitigate at a two to one ratio as required by DEP and their variance process. Uh, the available mitigation areas we have uh, Forested habitat shown in dark green, emergent habitat shown in light green, 
flood storage shown in blue and upland habitat shown in pink. Um, and once again, and we also have these, you'll see these purple stars located here, here, and here. Those are active data loggers that we are actually collecting groundwater data to help us design the uh, wetland mitigation site. We find that the, the key thing to, to design one of these mitigation sites is to get the uh, wetlands growing at the proper elevation in relation to groundwater. And so by being this constant monitoring, we can compare these uh, the existing data with rainfall data and things like that. And there's a direct relationship and it will help us with our design. This is the other mitigation area, which is the southeast blueprint. Again, that two to one mitigation, same color scheme. You got the forested habitat and dark green, emergent habitat and light green, uh, flood stores in blue, upland habitat in pink. And again, we do restore these natural floodplains. We've also got the monitoring walls. This one happens to have an infiltration basin next to it. It's probably uh, showing later. So that is the PowerPoint show. And I'm going to jump to the plans now. So in order to, um, for this presentation, uh, we overlay the design on the um, on an aerial photo because we think it's a lot easier to follow that way. These are the frames. Uh, we're starting at the southern end of the project, uh, uh, sheet 24 in Hoppington, and the plans go run to the north till you get to plan 35, which is located uh, adjacent to Route 9. Now the plans jump back down here to the western end, uh, uh, the mass bike, and go from uh, west to east through the project area. And so I'm going to go through these overlays now. Uh, the white frames are basically Hockington frames, and the black frames are Westboro. Uh, this is the first sheet. Uh, the, these NOI, these uh, correspond to the NOI plans. So if you go to NOI sheet number 24, impact plan, this is what you'll see. Uh, we just decided it was a lot easier to look at these air photos because it can give you some context of where you are in space. It's really hard to do that as you look through those plans. I think if you take a look, you'll notice that. Uh, this is our, uh, we have an infiltration basin number three on this sheet, but um, that's about it for that sheet. So this is our first uh, plan with wetland impacts on it. Uh, there's some consistencies through these plans. Uh, the Orange line is the limit of grading on all of them. The brown line, sediment control. Yellow line is the uh, limit of work. Uh, proposed walls are shown in this dash area. Uh, wetland impacts are shown in uh, dark uh, with the wetland ID followed by a, uh, the EVW impact. Those are cumulative impacts for the entire wetland. Um, these, there's also individual impacts shown on these plants that I'm not going to get into as much because it's a uh, pretty fine detail. I will zoom in. Um, you can see the uh, BVW permanent impacts are shown in orange crosshatch. A green crosshatch is temporary BVW. The uh, purplish crosshatch is a uh, land underwater impact. Um, and you can see there are um, numbers in orange with black outline are permanent impacts. Numbers in white, uh, I'm sorry, numbers with white outlines are temporary impacts. And so in this case, we have um, impacts to a um, in this, the work in this area involves removing an existing uh, paved swale and replacing it with a uh, vegetated swale. And so those are the uh, impacts associated with that. In particular, we have uh, about 700 um, square feet of impact to land and the water and 279 uh, linear feet of uh, bank. Both those gets restored. We have some impact associated here with um, culvert placement. Back out. Sorry. And we have the two uh, infiltration basins, three and six. So we're going to continue northbound. And again, there's no impacts on sheet 26. We included all the sheets so you could stay in context with where you are in the plan. If we only included the ones that had uh, jurisdictional wetlands, the plans would jump all over the place and you kind of lose track where you are. So hopefully this helps. So we're moving on to sheet 27. Again, there's no wetland impacts, but just to get you oriented, this is uh, Fruit Street. You've got ramp NW at the bottom and ramp e at the top. Okay, we're getting into the uh, area of the interchange directly. Uh, we have infiltration basin number six above, number two down here. Um, starting at the top of the page, uh, wetland TO2, WO2, uh, which is ramp, uh, there's impacts from ramp, temporary impacts from ramp EN in this location. 
and we have uh, wetland TO2WO3, which is uh, located in the um, eastern loop ramp. Uh, you see this green impact that surrounds the, um, the, the area that we're going to work in. Uh, that, those impacts are directly related to us having to uh, grade in the wetland impacts. So those are all associated, I'm sorry, the wetland mitigation. So all those impacts are uh, basically from wetland mitigation. Uh, I-495 and I-90, I'm sorry, the two barrels of I-495 become closer together. And so you have median impacts uh, in a, a lot of the project. Uh, here is wetland TO1 W48. And this uh, BBW here, the entire BBW is impacted along with uh, TO1 W48. Some of these other uh, wetlands we'll see on other plans. Uh, so we'll continue down the line. Here you've got 495, uh, 495 crossing I-90. Um, the wetlands up here is the big infield. We'll see on sheets 41 and 48. Uh, the, this is ramp EN. Uh, the, the ramps are named after the direction of travel, for, in this case, east to north. Uh, this is wetland T01W09, and there's some impacts. You can see temporary impacts cross Heston Green from the construction of ramp EN. Uh, there's also some impacts to the intermittent stream that runs through here. Uh, there's about 5,000 per feet of impact to land underwater. Uh, again, ramp, this is from ramp NE. Ramp e, NE is elevated. You can see these are bridge piers. So we do span that, so all those impacts are temporary. Uh, this side of uh, I-90 and corridor 495 is wetland TO1W35, where we have impacts to um, be shown in green for temporary BBW impacts, and the blue is the land subject to flooding impacts. Same on this side. And either the, the, the light blue is uh, borderline subject to flooding impacts, and again, the green is the temporary BBW. And we'll continue down the path here. So uh, here's the... Uh, Railroad tracks. Uh, at the top, we have approximately uh, for wetland TO2 W26. We have some minor impacts from construction of this outfall. Um, this is the ramp that goes uh, adjacent to Cumberland Farms. It's ramp WN. Uh, there's will be um, you'll, up in sheet 50. You'll be able to see the entire impact. There's also some impacts along here to that uh, wetland where it ties uh, into uh, I-495 northbound. Again, as we just, as I just, uh, oh, so it started at the top at wetland uh, TO1W27, which is a, a BBW temporary impacts from an in, uh, installation of an outfall here. Again, the I-495, you can see, is starting to go northbound. It's located in the median. Uh, so it's, there's a couple median wetlands here, TO1W15 and TO1W16. Both of these are impacted from the relocation of I-90 northbound into the infield, or into the median area, not infield, sorry about that. Um, also the same with this TO1W17, same thing, uh, I-495 northbound going into the median and impacting the uh, wetland. These uh, impacts, the TO2W10 are shown on sheets uh, 30 and 60. We'll get to those later in the presentation. Um, here we have uh, stream, intermittent stream impacts uh, in the infield. This is a uh, detail of what we're proposing in this area. Uh, it's a vegetated uh, apron detail. We've worked this out with DEP from our past variances. That they, liked, uh, they didn't like the, the bare riprap in areas where there were wetlands, so they requested we put some compost, uh, core fiber matting on it, and plant them. Uh, we've had good success with this on some other projects. And it does, uh, it does grow in quite well, and it is better than the bare riprap in the uh, wetland areas. So that's proposed in several areas throughout the project, and that was the detail. Uh, so there's, you've got a, um, some approximately 80 uh, square feet of permanent impact to land in the water and some bank impact in this area also. For wetland TO2W7, again, you've got some outfall um, impact and some Road and a widening grading impacts along the edge. Continuing northbound, we've got that drainage swale that I mentioned, uh, drainage swale number seven in Westboro. You can see this is the solar site that's located along 495. If you drive it, you're probably familiar with it. 
excuse me, Mark, can you go back to the previous? Um, yep. The, the one before this one. That one. Um, it's, it takes, it takes just, a lot. Okay, so that's just a bridge area there, that square kind of in the center. Yes, that's uh, Flanders Road. Uh, okay. The over, over Flanders. Okay, got it. All right, sorry. No problem. Got me. Let me get that drink of water. That's good. Yes. Uh, I, I do have a question about the outfalls. You said you're putting in new outfalls. Um, is that, you know, looking at the diagrams, that's what you're doing up and down the, uh, the barrel of the highway? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So those are discharging into, directly into resource areas. Is there any treatment going on before discharge? I'm going to let uh, Beth want to chime in on that. I do. So they're not, they're not new outfalls. Um, mm -hmm. We are reconstructing existing outfalls in many cases because there's been destabilization of the slope. Um, in general, we tried to pull all the existing outfalls back away from the resource areas and add in uh, either these vegetated aprons as shown in the detail or just a standard riprap apron if it was outside of the resource area to um, slow the velocities. Um, so every outfall doesn't necessarily have uh, stormwater treatment, but there are no new discharges to wetlands for the project. And okay, how about you going to change the catch basins or the existing catch basins, any oil water separators or sediment traps in the catch basins? So the catch basins are going to be, uh, I think, almost all new. They'll be replaced with uh, the deep sump catch basins. Um, there are no oil and grit separators, but we do have the infiltration basins with the sediment ore bays um, at those nine locations. All right. Thank you. Yep. And I think we're also, how many uh, existing outfalls versus how many proposed deaths? Oh, right. So off the top of my head, I think there were like uh, 100 and maybe 120 existing outfalls for the project. And we're actually decreasing the number of outfalls to about half of that um, because we're trying to combine the water and treat it at the infiltration basins. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, then this is a great example. Good timing. There's an infiltration basin. Uh, I'm sorry, that's a swell. Uh, so continuing on, we are on sheet 34. Um, There's some impacts to wetland uh, WO, T01 W32 uh, from some grading from the roadway and from outfall construction. And again, we have some impact over here to uh, in wetland T01 W30 for the outfall uh, to put in the protection in that area. Uh, so you have some impacts to land underwater and to bank in that area. Um, our final impact on 495 um, in, at the northern end of the project is this uh, 30, 90 square feet of temporary BBW impact from this outfall and from some roadway widening over here. And there's a, a little bit of impact on this side, which was accounted for in the previous sheet. Uh, this is Route 9. We're now going to jump to the western end of the project on the Massachusetts Turnpike in Hopkinton. Uh, this is sheet 36 if you're looking at your NOI plans. Uh, again, there's, there's no impact on the first sheet. As we continue down, here we are on sheet 37. There's some minor impacts from uh, installation of outfalls to wetland TTKE slash TTKF. You see some wetland impact there and some there. Uh, wetland T01 W24. Again, there's some minor impacts from the widening, uh, the slopes in here and in construction of um, stormwater outfalls, uh, infiltration basin, as Beth had mentioned, uh, five and infiltration basin number six are located here. Uh, continuing down, or at the Whitehall Brook, uh, this is the same cross section I showed you of this uh, pr proposed culvert. Uh, we have temporary impacts to, to Whitehall Brook of um, about 90 linear feet of bank and 1,200 uh, square feet of land underwater. That's in addition to these impacts uh, from widening that were shown in the previous sheet. Uh, there's also 225 cubic yards of dredge at this end for scour protection and 175 cubic yards of dredge at, uh, at this end of the outfall, along with 
for, oh, for oh, sorry, for wetland TO1 W36, there you can see this green area is that um, BBW impact. And again, the light blue area is the BLSF impact. Now, starting at the uh, northern side, there's approximately 5,000 square feet of impacted uh, wetland, temporary to wetland TO1 W23, as you can see here in light green and blue. Uh, for grading and for outfall installation. Uh, for wetland TO1 W19, same thing. There's some grading and outfall installation. Uh, this side, it is again, this is mostly grading in this area for wetland TO1 W37. Uh, just along this edge, there's, a, there's an impact. Uh, this is vernal pool number uh, 14 that we talked about earlier. Uh, there's a temporary impact of 982 square feet. Uh, that vertical pool is located in uh, wetland of TO1 W38, and there's impact. Again, the cumulative impact of that entire wetland is what's shown here in black, and the individual impacts are shown hatched. Uh, we move into the uh, uh, northern loop ramp area. Um, all these temporary impacts uh, for wetland TO1W13, TTKB, TO2W05, and TTKC, all these impacts are associated with the construction of the wetland mitigation area. Um, we again have to grade into the wetland mitigation areas, into the wetlands to create the wetland mitigation area to blend them in. Uh, so that's what all these temporary impacts are related to. Again, this is our mitigation area. Shown in pink are our BLSF mitigation areas. Uh, there's one, two here, and three here. Um, we also have some impacts from ramp uh, SW in this location, which um, is some BBW, uh, about 1,400 uh, square feet of permanent impact in this location. This ramp is on a viaduct after that, so it does go uh, over the other wetlands. Um, there's um, some temporary impacts from grading and work zones for wetland uh, TO2 W01. And there are some bank and stream impacts in this area. There's this intermittent stream that's existing today that gets um, altered while we're working, but then restored. Uh, you've got the start of ramp ES here. And along with that, you've got impacts from to wetland TO1 W39 and another infiltration basin here, number one. Continuing eastbound on the Massachusetts Turnpike. Um, you've got uh, on the northern end, you've got wetland W, I'm sorry, TO1 W23, which again, you have some uh, impacts from um, grading uh, to put install new roadway and for outfall construction. Um, I think I went backwards. Sorry. I did. Sorry about that. I'm back. All right. So this is wetland TO1 W14, uh, ramp WS. Uh, this is a temporary impact uh, in this area. You can see this ramp WS is on viaduct. Again, shows you the footings. Uh, we're spanning the wetland here. Uh, there is some grading, and there's work zone here. There's also a wall on this side. You can see the dashed wall. Um, it's also in this area for ramp uh, WS some temporary impacts to wetland TO1 W01. Again, that's getting spanned by this bridge structure, but infiltration basin number nine. Uh, you also, uh, this is proposed uh, replacement crossing number 13 in this area. I remember we mentioned there were three replacement crossings. This is one of them. Uh, TO1 W1 is the infield wetland. It's quite large. It shows up on three or four plans. Um, it's basically, uh, impacts along the entire fringe of this, uh, the giant infield that's out there that was adjacent to the toll plaza. Uh, and so that's shown on several plans. Uh, we'll see it again as we go through the presentation. Now we're crossing 495 and I-90. Um, in this area, we have the uh, ramp coming, uh, ramp NE. Uh, we, we showed these uh, temporary impacts on a previous plan uh, again spanning. There is a Sudbury River. Um, there's a work zone to do work in this area. 
approximately 1,700 square feet of impact uh, in this area to uh, facilitate construction of ramp NE. Uh, we are not replacing either of the Sudbury culverts. Um, this impact right here to T01W9 is an isolated wetland, which is non-jurisdictional. We still we showed all the impacts on the plans. Uh, here you see uh, this is coming down I-90 westbound. This is the ramp WN as in west to 495 northbound. Uh, this is a works area. Uh, when we get to sheet T50, T50, I'm sorry, sheet 50, you'll see the entire wetland. Uh, again, the, the blue impact is um, temporary uh, border lane subject to flooding impact. I'll go over these impacts to ramp WN when I get to sheet 50. Uh, again, we have a um, BLSF uh, mitigation area, uh, which is temporary impacts uh, a small portion of wetland TO2W23. Uh, on the south side, we have impacts to wetland TO2W24. Uh, you can see for outfall construction in a few locations. Keep moving down. We get to, uh, this is the uh, Sudbury River Tributary 13. We're not proposing to replace it, but we are doing scour protection at both ends. And we are doing dredge. There's 105 cubic yards of dredge on this side. And there's some about 1,000 square feet of uh, land and water impact on this side, along with some uh, minor BBW impacts in this area to wetland TO2W20. Uh, this is the detail for the um, scour countermeasure for tributary 13. Again, this is one of the uh, vegetated um, riprap aprons that we're proposing in compliance with what we've done in the past with DEP. And we're not going to go uh, back into the interchange. This is the northern loop ramp. Uh, basically, these are the impacts associated that I mentioned that were associated with the wetland mitigation area when we go to restore it. Uh, continuing on, jump into the toll plaza area. Uh, this again is that giant wetland T01, W01. And you can see those fringe impacts I was discussing around the entire fringe of this, the orange being the uh, permanent uh, BVW impacts. You've got the three, two basins in this area. You've also got another larger BLSF mitigation area. Uh, this is proposed replacement crossing number 10 here. Uh, we can discuss that. Beth can discuss that later if you have any questions on that. We are replacing this connection here. Um, continuing down, we are uh, wetland TO2W06. Uh, uh, this is what uh, this is ramp ES east to south, and you can see the uh, orange would be the uh, permanent BBW impact. Uh, there is a wall that you can see here. Hopefully, it's uh, the dash line, uh, and the green area would be the uh, area required to construct that wall, which reduces the wetland impacts. Here we're at the uh, eastern loop area, which is again all the impacts in this area are associated with wetland mitigation. Uh, this one is from uh, is to wetland T01W09. And finally, we're back to uh, the ramp that is adjacent to Cumberland Farms, um, which impacts wetland T02W9. We have two large work areas on either side of that um, to facilitate construction. You do have minor impacts. These orange uh, dots are piers. And uh, all those piers added together uh, equal about 200 square feet of permanent wetland impact. And that is what I have in my presentation now. You know, questions or however you guys want to proceed, let me know. This is Andy Kenningsburg of the Westboro Conservation Commission. Is there any, are there any questions from the Westboro Board? Yeah, I'm Mark, Jerry Cushing with Westboro Concom. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the detail going over. It was pretty thorough. Uh, just going back to those groundwater wells that you mentioned, um, you're collecting data to help you with the mitigation effort. Um, yeah. How many years of data you, you hope to have um, on that? By the time we construct, three or four at least. Yeah. We've already got a couple. Uh, the, the data loggers are really helpful because you can, it's just, you, we got that you go out with a Bluetooth reader, it reads the, you, you download the readings and you bring them back to your office and you can have a spreadsheet and see how it's going up and down. It really is key to 
getting a good mitigation site is what we found. Tim Bacalo. Hey, 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 Andy, this is Jeff Barnes. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I think what we, you know, the Hopkins and Conservation Commission at this point would just like to um, drop off because we have, you know, a pretty uh, heavy agenda for the rest of the evening. So we can just kind of, um, I think we can break off and then DOT can come in um, separately to okay. uh, uh, different meetings and answer questions. Uh, <laughs> That's fine. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Andy. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so we can close out, too. Do you need to take a vote to continue the hearing? Yes. Yeah, so we'll, 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 con we don't need to take a vote, but we'll continue the hearing out to, um, our next meeting for the hot July 28th, which is the 28th, right. Okay, we'll handle our vote in in our hearing itself. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right, thank you for the presentation. We appreciate it. Thank you appreciate for your time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you. Give you back your control. Uh, hey, Mark, are you still there? Mark Fobert? Yeah. Oh, uh, this is Jordan McCarran. I may follow up with you and just ask that you email um, a request to continue to our August 11th meeting just so we have that for our records. Yep, no problem. Okay, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you offline. I appreciate okay. it. Bye-bye. Bye. You can do the same for us too, Mark. Just All right. send us an we'll email. Do. Appreciate continue. it. Continue. Yep, have a good night. Good luck with your agenda. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mark. <laughs> All right. Bye now. Okay. What did I do with my agenda? It's around here somewhere. Um, We've got a new NOI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a new, okay, I got it. Sorry. Uh, so we have a new NOI, Bryant, 0 Downey Street. This is a notice of intent for a single-family home. And I need to read this for the public Jack record. Yep. That's not where we should be Jackson for 132 Clinton. Wait, wait, okay. Yeah, 132. I think Bryant opened up at the last meeting. All right. Uh, Did okay. I send you the wrong ones? No. I've got it. I can I can post it on the screen. All right, I'm doing I'm doing the paper shuffle here, folks. Hold on a second. And if you could give me um, an okay to share a screen, Jeff, I could I could pop up the the hearing notice on the screen. Yeah, can you do that, Don? Yeah, I just don't have my icon for sharing screen. Right, Do you have on. to give me a approval or something? Yeah, hold on a second. Having some uh, technical difficulties here. Okay, you good to go, Don? Let's see how I get the icon to do it. It's shared. Like I have in the past. Okay, no, I got it. Okay. All right. Just had to open up my screen a little. Okay. okay. You able to see that, Jeff? Yeah, 130. Okay, got it. So the Hawking and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 14th, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. virtually online to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Kevin Jackson to construct a single family house with associated site work. The location is 132 Clinton Street, assessor's map, R20, block six, lot zero. Thank you, Don. Hi there. Um, 
My name is Susan MacArthur from MacArthur Environmental Consulting, and I'm representing Kevin Jackson, the homeowner applicant. Hi, Mrs. MacArthur. How are you tonight? Hello. Good, good. Um, they, I texted them. They had trouble logging in, so I'm thinking they probably called in. I, I'm not sure if they're on the line, but um, also joining is uh, Neil Crothers. He's from Mill Construction Corporation, and he's the builder for this project. Um, so I might as well just jump into it. Um, the lot contains a, the, it's a single family home project. Um, the lot contains a trailer, camper, gravel driveway um, off of Clinton Street and several outbuildings. Um, there used to be a house in the back uh, where this proposed house is. Um, but it was torn down a few years ago, so there's nothing there right now. It's just a soil and weeds and whatnot. Um, and I mean, if you want, oh, you do have photos. Okay. Um, I also have some photos. Oh, Matt must have taken these. Okay, so that's the area where the house was, just in the back there. Um, so it moderately slopes down to a bordering vegetated wetland in the back and <clears throat> late last March um, I did delineate the wetland resource area and it, the wetland line was later adjusted by Matt Merrill from Lucas Environmental um, and based on his review and so um, what you see this, this plan has been revised to show the revised wetland line out there. Um, there is also a wetland, if you scroll up a little bit toward the road, there's a wetland across the street and the 100 foot buffer does extend, on, yeah right there, does extend onto the property slightly but we're not proposing any work out there. Okay. Um, so the proposed project consists of the construction of a single family home um, within basically the same footprint of the previous house uh, only larger, this is larger. Um, so this new two-story house will have a full foundation and a walkout basement in the back. Um, there, there'll also be a raised deck off the back there. Um, work includes um, grading, excavation, uh, pouring the foundation, constructing the house, um, connecting, uh, tying into the water and sewer lines that you know, are out there. Um, and no trees are proposed to be removed uh, with this project. In fact, um, the homeowner was adamant that the design avoid tree. There is a, a large pine nearby and, um, and also a large silver maple. And so the house is situated so that it avoids um, impacting those, those trees. Um, and the building itself will not encroach into the 50 foot no build zone. Um, so prior to any ground disturbance, we're proposing an erosion control barrier um, at the down gradient limits of work. Um, that could be tightened up if we need to. I know it does go quite far. Um, so, yeah, so we could tighten that up if, we, if need be. And uh, we're also proposing um, some dry wells at the downspouts of the um, of the new structure. And a few of the, the wells out there um, are going to be abandoned, or they may already be abandoned. Maybe um, the homeowner can speak to that if, if they're on the line right now. Yes, yeah. I see um, kind of in the southern corner of the house, existing well to be abandoned yeah so that will be abandoned and then they're proposing another uh, well yeah right there now i don't know if that exists neil are you on the call you might have your mute your oh uh what's his last name sorry brothers c-r-o-t-h-e-r-s he was on i saw his name uh Last name is Brothers. C. Scruthers. Scruthers. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, he's right here. I got him. Where is he? 
Um, I just maybe he can't unmute. Maybe you need to unmute him. Yeah. Uh, um, Mr. Crothers, are you there? I unmuted him. Um, Mr. Crothers? Okay, well, Susan, um, so you're still there? Yes, I am. Okay, so um, the area where the house is being built, it sounds like it's all previously disturbed area. Is yeah, that yeah, that is correct, yeah. Okay, and then I see an existing... Uh, Don, can you just go back to that other... Um, the site plan? Please. So there's an existing well up in the, uh, um, I guess that'd be the eastern corner there near the shed. Yeah. Is that going to be abandoned too? Just curious. They didn't tell me that that one's going to be abandoned. So I'm guessing, he has chickens, so, so I think they're, you know, he uses that well for to water the chickens and whatnot. So the chickens stay in the little area they're witness. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, uh, right. I think this looks pretty straightforward to me. I'll just open it up. Matt, did you have any comments on this? Um, let's say a couple things. Uh, as Sue mentioned, we get the wetland boundary all set, so that's fine as shown on the plan. I think just a couple outstanding questions um, that I had in my original review that I'm not sure were addressed. One was involving the wells as far as what exactly was going to be abandoned and um, potentially I can just be conditioned with, you know, that it has to be, if it's going to be abandoned, it has to be by DEP policy. Yeah, that's a good point, Matt. Wasn't sure what the status of the septic system was. I think it was a, originally there was just a note on it that it had to be inspected. Don't know if that's approved by... Or to health yet or not? Obviously, if that has to be replaced entirely, that uh, changes the scope of the project a little bit. Yeah, um, they, I don't know that um, that it's been approved yet. And if it does fail, that you know, they I had asked specifically. They said they're going to put the new um, septic system in the same vicinity, right in that area. So, um, which is right, yeah, like right where the cursor is there. Yeah. It uh, I mean, it, it seems to me, uh, Susan, this is Jeff Barnes, sorry. Yeah. Uh, that they would want to get that tested to see if it passes, because if it doesn't, that, you know, expands, if they need to put a new septic in, that expands the scope of the project, right? Even though it's in the same area? Um, yeah, I mean... Okay, I mean, I don't know that it would expand out toward the wetland. I think it would be, plus the installation of a septic is um, an exempt activity under the Wetlands Protection Act. But, um, but you know, I don't know about the, the local bylaw, but. Yeah, it's, um, not, it's not under our bylaw, but. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, just, I think it would make sense for the owner uh, to get some type of opinion as to whether that existing septic system is uh, is good or if it's not good. If it's not good, it's going to need to be replaced. You know, and again, I think that would need to be uh, included in the scope of the project here that's being proposed. Matt, mm -hmm. uh, does that make sense, Don? Yeah. Um I think the commission would want to at least know, you know, if if there's going to be a, a new septic system, is going to at least meet the 50, or are they going to be able to get it outside the 100? But if this did fail and the commission um, did issue an order of conditions, um, they, it would be covered under a project change, and the commission could look at it depending on what they're proposing. They get it outside the buffer, the commission would see that as insignificant. If they're going to put it inside the 50, they may want an amended notice of intent or a new NOI based on whatever is going to come down the pike. Yeah, because it looks like... Right I mean, they make an effort to keep it outside. 
Sorry, Sorry. go ahead. I, I was going to say there, they would make an effort to keep it outside of the 50, um, a, a little bit, um, the reason for where it's, you know, they want it to be is based on there's that large tree right near there. Um, so they're specifically trying to, well, I don't know if that dot is the tree though. Um, I don't think the trees are actually shown, but there is a, a large pine right there, right, right near there. And they want to specifically avoid taking any or impacting any roots or any trees. So, um, so I think it's situated where, you know, where it is and where they want it to be. Um, I know Neil knows this. I wish he could speak because, <laughs> um, you know, he could talk about this. Yeah. Um, Oh, there is a chat. Um, I wonder if he's trying to. No, that's not him. Yeah, no. Jeff. My only other comment was that in my original um, memo, I had requested some sort of detail with regard to the the um, rooftop infiltration, the drywalls. Typically, you require something on the plan that shows exactly how those are going to be built, and you know that they're properly sized. Right. That would really be the only other item um, that was outstanding from my perspective. Okay. Yeah, so we can, so we, we just need a little bit more detail with regard to that, Susan. And I, I think we can, you know, with regard to the septic, uh, we can do that as a project change request, um, as, as Don had indicated. And, and uh, you know, we can vote um on this you know pending your submittal of the uh infiltration basin calculations um just you know dab don and, and matt look at those and approve them um you mean drywall the, the drywall yep sorry yep. that's okay um okay uh so let me just open it up to questions comments from commission members So I, I just wanted to, um, this is uh, Janine LeBlanc, uh, the commissioner. I just want a clarification. Um, it was mentioned, obviously, that the, the spot where the house is is previously disturbed because the prior home was there. But it is currently pervious. It's all gone back to grass, correct? Yeah, it's just soil and weeds and whatnot. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, any other questions or comments from commission members? Through the chair? Yep. This is Carrie Reed. Um, so you mentioned the erosion controls could get buttoned up a little bit, and I, I'd like to see that on the next set of plans. Okay. Especially if I'm going to like hit the septic. It just looks like, to me, my first thought was they were going to try to grade all the way out there. Yeah, we can tighten that up, sure. And then if they're going to keep the existing trees, we've had some issues where the contractors put the erosion controls outside of the trees because they don't appreciate it. Um, so just be aware of that. And maybe have, I don't know. Hi, this is Ed Harrow. Um, I noticed in, in Matt's report, he questioned um, whether the house could be physically relocated. I realize it's previously disturbed, but he questioned whether it could be relocated. And the same question with the septic system. Um, could it be entirely outside the 100-foot buffer? That's it for me. Um, you know, again, I hate to answer for the homeowner, but I think they're very private people, and they wanted to put the house in the back where it's not seen by the road. Uh, it, probably one of the reasons. Um, as well as, you know, that was where the previous house was. And they like the, the overlook. It's, you know, um, very pretty back there. It's scenic, um, you know, looking out, out at the wetland resource there. There's a lot of wildlife. Um, that's what I'm thinking. But, uh, you know, I, I hate to speak for them, but I think that's the reason. Okay, this is Ed again. I, I don't really have an issue with the house there because there was a house there. 
but I'm still curious about the septic system and whether that needs to be um, within the 100 foot buffer or if it could be put outside of it. I realize there's one there and I realize it's not additional disturbance, it's just, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, they're not sure they have to replace it at this point also. Um, right. They still need, need to do the testing, so that I think that would be addressed as part of the project change request, Ed. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any questions or comments from the audience members? Going once, doing twice. Okay. If I can get a motion to uh, close and approve the notice of intent as discussed, um, pending the uh, submittal of the drywall calcs. Uh, and the revised erosion control um, barrier on the site plan. I think those were the only uh, items that were uh, discussed, if I'm not correct. If I can get a motion, please. Hi, this is Carrie. I'll make the motion. Okay, and a second. This is Ed. I'll second. Okay, and we will do the roll call. So, Melissa. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Ed. Aye. Janine. Aye. Uh, this is Jeff. I'm an I, and I don't think I'm missing anyone else. Ted isn't with us tonight. Um, so the uh, the motion passes. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. MacArthur. Okay. Bye now. Day. You too. Okay. All right. So moving on, we have a request for determination of applicability for 23 Woody Island Road. Um, Mr. Bloom, and I need to read this for the public hearing. The Hopkins Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 14th, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. virtually online. If you're all persons interested in a request for determination of applicability, of applicability filed by Eric Bloom and Cheryl Cohen to construct a garage addition with associated site work. The location is 23 Woody Island Road, Assessor's Map L36, Block 17, Lot 0. Do we have a representative for the applicant? Uh, yes, this is, uh, uh, Chuck here, who is our, our, our um, builder, and uh, myself, Eric Bloom, and Cheryl Cohen is here also. Okay, very good. Good evening. Good evening, and thank you. Good evening. So you just want to give us a quick overview of the project? Um, sure. Is that, uh, uh, let me say I'm new at this, so forgive my... Uh, um, my entry level discussion here, but basically on the front of the house, the side facing the street, um, we're proposing, yes, with a curtain now, we're proposing putting in a garage. Uh, you'll see a little bump out right now that's within that. It that looks like it's about 10 feet wide and about six feet deep. Uh, that is actually a, uh, an existing shed that, it, that is connected to the house. So effectively, the garage will be, for lack of a better expression, a replacement of that for a two car garage. So the shed will be replaced with a two-car garage? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's obviously previously disturbed area. Yes. Um, and I'm just looking, so is there a driveway going into that? Uh, the whole front of it is driveway. In fact, we're going to be covering the driveway with the garage. Okay. Uh, On the street, you can drive directly up to the shed. It's uh, it's paved paved ground. Okay, so all this area is paved right now. Um, almost all of it. There's about three feet in front of the shed and on the sides of it, which are um, which are dirt. All of the rest of it. Is well, yeah, dirt, grass, you know. Okay. 
Uh, all right, Matt and Don, did you have any comments? Uh, this is Matt. I just had a couple of minor um, items to discuss on this one. Um, Don, I did send you some pictures on this. I don't know if you have those, if you want to bring those up or not. Um, the first I, you know, a couple of these just kind of administrative things. The, the scale shown on the plan was incorrect. Um, it shows sort of a 20 scale, it's actually a 10 scale plan. Um, and the, the buffer zones under the bylaw should be measured from the bordering land so with the flooding line, which is the 100 year floodplain line. Again, very minor things. Um, really the only concern I have on the project as a whole during construction is uh, there aren't any erosion controls shown on this plan. Yeah. I think the, the risk to North Pond is, is fairly slight around the house. My larger concern would be um, tracking materials or, you know, where materials are going to be stockpiled. There's not a lot of room out here. And any uh, material getting onto Woody Island Road, the fairly steep um, slope there that goes right down to the resource areas. Um, I did speak to Mr. Bloom on the site about that when I was out there doing the inspections. I don't know if the, the contractor can speak to that, but that was really my, my main concern was making sure that no soil got onto the roadway, uh, you know, during a rain event that could get washed into the resource area. Yeah, Chuck Shula here. Um, we, we understand there's not much area there for uh, storage of material, so we're, um, we're not anticipating that we can dig it and directly put it into the truck, but we're not um, anticipating leaving it there for an extended period of time. We're going to pretty much remove it within a couple days, you know. But we understand rain will be a, a factor in this, so we don't want to encounter any runoff situations, but we're going to do our best to get all the fill that's removed for construction off-site as fast as we can. And then, um, obviously, we might have to bring some other um, structural fill in later, but um, we understand there's really not much of a place to stockpile. Uh, we'd like to have a little bit of leeway, maybe, you know, a few days to allow us to dig it out, um, keep the process moving, but I know that's going to be a discussion that we'll probably have, so... Um, no, I, I think that makes sense, Mr. Shuley. We would just ask you to be kind of cognizant of, um, you know, when you're doing the construction, just keeping an eye on what the weather looks like. Yep. You know, so if it looks like there's going to be a storm event or something like that, then you, you know, cover the stockpile, put up hay bales, you know, to prevent any type of siltation, that type of thing, or remove it from the site, you know. Right. Either one. Um I think this is a fairly minor project, so I don't think we need to get too, uh, um, I don't think we need to be too strict about it, but, you know, we just want to make sure that there's no sedimentation getting into the, in, in, you know, into the lake, obviously. Yeah, I understood. Uh, yeah, yeah. So just, just be aware of that. And then, you know, to, to Matt's point, you know, if you can just submit a revised plan to us, just showing the correct scale at the, you know, the 10 foot scale, not the 20 foot. Yep. That would be helpful. Uh, those are my comments and I'll open it up to the commission members. Any comments from anyone on the commission? Okay. If I can get a motion to issue a negative determination for the request for determination of that applicability, please. Did we have any public comments? Oh, thank you, Anna. Uh, are there any comments from the public? Thank you for reminding me. Going once, going twice. Okay, if I can get a motion, please, for the negative determination. So moved. Okay. Oh, Ed, motion, I'll second. Okay, so Ed made the motion, Carrie seconded, um, and we'll do the roll call. I believe Melissa dropped off, so Carrie? I'm still here at the moment, Jeff. Oh, Melissa's still there. Hi, Melissa. Yep. Okay, sorry. I'll vote aye. 
Okay. And then I'm and then I'm dropping off. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Gary. Hi. Jim. Hi. Ed. Hi. Janine. Hi. And Jeff's and I. And Ted is not with us, uh, so he will not vote. Okay. Um, I think you guys are all set. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bloom. Have a good evening. You too. Thank Have you. a good evening. Okay. Moving along. Moving along. Thank you for reminding me of the public comment, Anna. I almost forgot. All right. Harding. Uh, 70 Spring Street. This is a notice of intent and it's a continuation, so I do not need to read this one. Mr. Harding? Good evening. It's uh, Peter Bemis representing Mr. Harding. Oh, Mr. Bemis, how are you doing tonight? Very good. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, we provided Don with, with an updated plan, uh, which uh, he has kindly put in front of you this evening. Um, if, if you wouldn't mind just panning a little bit more to the uh, to the um, left so that it would open up the right side. Uh, I, know, I just noticed the video, at least on my screen, if you folks can see it, I, I'm just trying to get, there you go, a little bit more and, I, and I'll, I'll be real happy. <laughs> um, so we, Mr. Harding, who lives at, uh, we've gone the wrong way. So who lives at the residence that's uh, located there at 70, um, shown at 70 here, uh, would prefer to see the driveway going behind his garage, which is uh, to the right of his residence, and then cross the, um, the intermittent stream where there's an existing crossing. So we, we had narrowed down to go over that crossing with our previous filing, um, and not go across its frontage. Uh, we need to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals with this petition eventually, but at this time, I think getting the environmental review completed is more important. And then the Zoning Board has viewed this before, this matter, not particularly this site, but this matter where you're not necessarily crossing your frontage because of the wetland resources. And when you give them a compelling reason to go in a different direction, I, I think that will, uh, will, will carry the day. So the driveway would go to the right. We still have a construction apron. Um, that would go in place uh, for support of access during construction. Uh, the driveway comes in. We did have to go out and do some more survey work, which was somewhat challenging because it's all thickly wooded through there. Um, but we were able to do that and, uh, and reflect that on the plan. Uh, the driveway is an upgradient right straight through to the uh, to the house that we're proposing. And the house position hasn't changed. The septic system hasn't changed. So everything related to the lot development is, is substantially similar to what you saw the previous time. Um, the stone culvert that's already there would be removed and um, replaced with uh, a properly sized uh, culvert. There are two 36 inch ADS uh, and HPD pipes um, with head walls on either side. Uh, we displace uh, about eight lineal feet of of uh, intermittent stream channel, and we uh, displace 150 uh, square feet of wetland uh, with that activity. And the proposal is to replicate the uh, the wetland, and the culverts will be placed right where the existing culvert is. There are a few trees that have to be displaced. They're shown um, in detail there. There's a couple of 24 inch and 18 inch deciduous trees, um, but after that, everything else is fairly small. Um, it's just thicker as you go around the back of the garage there, but there's no large trees. It's just, um, thick. We did show a 36 inch tree that's going to be maintained. That's, uh, shown between elevations 358 and 360. There's a, a line going through one of them showing where the proposed access and utility easements located. And then to mitigate, um, our impact for our driveway, we've got a, a filter strip that's going in on the downhill side. And then we're discharging to a rain garden that would go to the, uh, the street edge on the left-hand side of that driveway. Um, I'm introducing this to you this evening. I don't ex I expect to continue the hearing this evening. Uh, I would go to fire safety in the next uh, two-week period, hopefully, that you can put us back on another agenda. And if you, if you can't, then I'll, I'll go out for. I just 
it was more important to get this right than it was to uh, to rush it. So uh, we've done what our client would like, and I think from an environmental perspective, we've limited our activities in the Hunter Foot Buffer Zone. So thank you for that opportunity. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bemis. Um, so uh, that's good. I like this proposal better than the one that was previously presented. Uh, so the fire department needs to review the driveway configuration. Is that correct? Yes, they do. Yes. I've, I've talked with Tom uh, briefly and, uh, and then he was going to take this and meet with the chief and then I'd get back a written uh, comment back from them. Okay. Um, and, and with that, I'd provide that to Don so that you have that for your next meeting that I have their support. Yep. Yep. Okay. I think that makes sense. And I mean, in my view, I don't see anything too crazy here that I think that they would be opposed to. Maybe the turnaround um, towards the end of the driveway, but I'll let the uh, experts at the fire department speak to that. Um, so okay, trying so to honor that buffer zone. I, I really not wanted to go out there, uh, but but again, I'll see what their comment is. I, I am as far as I can be to the south and still do all of this without going into that buffer zone. So it's a, it's a unfortunately, it's a tight little site. And, and as you know, this this did have a permit some time ago. It's just Mr. Harding didn't act on it. And uh, I still have to actually provide you with a, a uh, non-construction um, certificate request. So those would be, would be a certificate to close out this old order. Um, so at, at the registry, we've uh, we've done the proper accounting for it. So, I'm sorry. Um, so, there's a COC that's, uh, what was that again? Um, so, so, yeah, so yeah, thank you, uh, Anna or, or Dawn. Thank you for bringing, this was the previous plan. Yeah. Um, the wetlands were, were far less extensive uh, back right. when we did this. And uh, this is the site plan that was used to secure an order of conditions in 1991 when Paul Varelli was the owner and he subsequently sold it to Mr. Harding. So, Mr. Harding's been there since, uh, I believe, 1992. Uh, but Mr. Harding didn't opt to do any work at that time, and uh, and that's where we are. <laughs> he bought the lot from Mr. Varelli, and right. he did not act on his permit, so it expired. Right. right. So they're going to apply for a certificate of compliance to invalidate this order. Right. 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 Okay. So that's being submitted. Well, yes, yes. One of, it's one of the items Don had asked me to prepare, and it's, yeah, it's so that, that, that hasn't been submitting submitted no. yet. You're doing that, okay? Yes, sir. That's right. I'm just letting you know that's the other administrative piece that I'd be looking to try to do at the next meeting is just is take care of that as well as seek a I would hope closure on this as long as I have fire department support. Yeah. No, I got it. Okay, and I'm just looking. Um, I apologize. Uh, bear with me. I was just looking for Matt's comments, and I don't see. Well, Matt, I think Matt, Matt needs to have a full opportunity to vet this. I've not. I'm not suggesting he's. He's. We've talked about it. Yeah. But he's not seen this, so so I'm not asking him to comment this evening. Okay. Well, I just wanted to. Matt, is there any? Um, there they are. Thank you, Don. I couldn't find them. I think the project has changed so right. significantly that I don't, I don't have to start entirely from scratch <laughs> but there's some additional wetland boundary that i didn't even look at okay. um, based on this and um yeah i'll have to go out back out to the site and i'll prepare a, a revised memo um that'll kind of supersede my initial one okay point. very good okay uh that makes sense um thank you matt so uh are there any questions or comments from commission members at this point Questions or comments? Yes. Uh, this is Carrie Reed. I was just having a hard time on this plan seeing the buffer near the septic system. I was looking. Am I missing? Yeah, if you you're right. So, so so the wetlands are shown there. Um, the series of flagging is um, that right? You're, you're following right along the line. Thank you, Donna yep. or Anna, that's doing that. And then so that we we've got the um, erosion control barrier. Uh, probably as closest point that would be the edge of your uh, protective no touch buffer. But do you have the buffer drawn on this plan? 
I do, but it's probably right right on top of that. It's right on top. Okay. Yeah, so that's why you don't get it. Uh, the one hundred is is uh, the one I can pick up. You can see the house is actually in it. There's a, a slight V there. Um, I can see it on the on the other side here, but I uh, in the orange right. Okay. And I'm sorry. I'll I'll make sure that's more pronounced when we issue the plan again. Okay. Yeah. Um... So what's that dotted or uh, dashed circular line around the house? That is a, a filter strip. So uh, we've got that around the foundation as well so that we can ensure. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm talking about the, uh, so uh, it's not the filter strip. So yeah, it's the setback for the septic in the, in the domestic well. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? Thank you. Oh, yes, the dash line of that. That's at the 100 foot setback. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. I got it now. Okay. Okay. Through the chair? Yep. Uh, just one administrative question, I guess. Now that we have work on this additional lot that wasn't originally proposed, I don't know if that Im impacts the um, limit of the uh, butter notices at all. I don't know if, this, if it picks up any additional butters that need to be notified. Um, prior to the next hearing. In the event there are, I, I, I will make that commitment. I'll just check that first thing in the morning so there's plenty of notice. I'm sorry. I It, it could very well trip, tip someone else. Um, I'm sorry. Good pickup, Matt. Yeah, if you can, if you can just verify that. Well, yeah. And, uh, you know, let us know. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions or comments from the commission? What uh, questions or comments from audience members? Excuse me, Jeff. Yes. This is Ed. Um, I, too, am confused at not being able to pick out the 50 and 100 foot buffer zone. So I'd like to see something where they're more visible. Um, and I have a question about the current crossing. Does the current crossing have, consist of pipe culverts or is it something different? Uh, I believe it to be granite slabs. Um, Matt, did you want to say anything different? I, I That's what I see when I'm there. Um, yeah, I, I, I certainly didn't see any pipes right. under there. It's, I'm guessing it's just stone. I mean, when I go back out there, I can certainly take a closer look at it. So, so my question is whether a box-style culvert would be more in keeping with what's there and more facilitative to critters that might pass back and forth. And um, that's it for me. Okay, thank you, Ed. Uh, I'm, I'm open to that suggestion, and we'll, we'll look at it. Okay. The chair? Yes, Don. I just didn't know if the new plan would have made any um, changes to the waiver request, because you've got waiver just of no disturbance zone, no build zone. So, Peter, um, if there's any changes. I'll go back and look at that again, Don. Yeah, good point. That's why I figured tonight would be like a housekeeping time to catch these things. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, just just make sure you cross your T's and dot your I's, Mr. Bemis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. yeah. Um, we like to be diligent here at the Hopkins and Conservation Commission. I, uh, you and me both, no problem. Okay. Uh, okay. Any comments or questions from audience members? All right, so we'll continue this out till July 28th. Does that work for you? It does, yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Great. Have a good evening now. Thank you. All right. Um, so we have DeWolf 28 Lumber Street. This is a continuation of an abbreviated Notice of Resource Area delineation. And, uh, Don, if you'll excuse me, I'm just going to get another glass of water, so I'll be back in two minutes, okay? He can get by with a glass of water. I've been Zooming since 10 o'clock this morning, teaching a class <laughs> in cryogenics and vacuum. I need more than water. <laughs> 
are you going to speak with the um, about the uh, 71 Franklin Road order of conditions? Hello. The the chair is the chair has stepped off for a second, ma'am. You left away. I know, but I I'm just gonna zoom off if you're not going to get to that subject. Would you just let me know if you're going to get? Is that on your agenda? Uh, this is uh, on the work sure. session, and we okay. don't know if we'll get to the work session. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm back on. I apologize. I'm a little parched. Um, okay. So may I ask that question so I can either listen or not listen? Uh, may I may I ask you if you're going to discuss the order of conditions on 71 Franklin Road? We will not be discussing that tonight. No. Okay, so another yeah, day. Yeah, it would just be a review of the order of conditions that was issued. There would be no discussion. Uh huh. But is there going to be any future uh, meeting when that will be worked on? The order of conditions has been issued. It's on the so work session item, so the commission could be aware that the document was signed electronically and has been issued. Yeah, we, we, right, already, so, we already voted and approved on that project, ma'am. All right, that's final, right? Yep. Okay, yeah, thank it, you. It's issued. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Um, so, the wolf. Uh, hi, Mrs. Hayes. Hello. Good evening. Go ahead. So um, we're before you with an ANRAG for this site. Um, I've met that Matt Val out there twice. Um, the last time we went, and we had he had a few more requests of some flag changes, and we accepted those changes. And now this this map has all the requested changes that Matt has requested. So, in my eyes, we've come to an agreement on this plan. Okay. That sounds good. Matt, do you concur with Mrs. Hayes? Um, certainly for the limits of the wetlands and ILSF that are showing all the flags, that all looks fine. I think the only question that's a little bit open in my mind is um, – if there, if there should be shown any vernal pool buffers on this. Um, I know the applicant did do some vernal pool inspections this spring and provided their reports uh, where they didn't find any evidence this year of it. Um, just the way the bylaw is written, it doesn't necessarily say, uh, you know, it talks about the, the presence of water for two months during the proper season. Um, I just don't know if the commission wants to accept that data that they're definitively not vernal pools um, or if they would want to see that shown on the plan or somehow noted. Um, well, I'll defer to your expertise on this, Matt. Uh, in the coals, I mean, do you see evidence that uh, there is know, potentially a, a likely vernal pool on the property or? Well, what we, yeah. could, do, what we could do is maybe also um, check again um, this coming spring. I know um, we'll probably go through a notice of intent filing, so you can also look again next spring. Yeah, I mean, my, my concern is just one year often, you know, these critters don't always necessarily use the same location each year um, based on conditions. We had kind of a weird spring where it was dry, then we had a, seemed like it was going to be really dry, then we had a fairly wet month, and then it got dry again. Um, I Personally, I would prefer to see a couple of years um, before you're making any kind of hard determination um, on something like a vernal pool, especially now where there are other vernal pools in the area um, that may be sort of uh, feeder areas for, for this site. So I don't have a problem with, you know, somehow noting that this would be inspected in the spring of um, 21. I just don't know how that would affect if um, the owner came back with an application prior to that. Yeah, I don't know if just the assumption should be that 
there there should be 125 foot buffer at this time. Um, you know, with a notation in the ORAD that says pending additional data submitted uh, in the spring of 21. Yeah, where where on the plan is there? You know, a presumptive uh, vernal pool is it? So there's, there's two locations: one in the IVW towards the front, um, and then in the BVW. Uh, I'm not sure. Is this is this north? Is north up on this, Nicole? Yeah. Uh, Four ninety five is off to the left. Yeah, north is up. Okay. So in the northern portion um, of that BVW, probably about, I would guess some of that extends offsite. It wasn't, it's not shown as flagged, so, um, but it's sort of that, the northern end of that. It's not the entirety of the BVW by any means, but there's a, a depression that uh, was holding water every yeah. time I've been out there um, in that yeah, part and then in the front. Yeah, I believe that to be, north of the site, but it could be right along the boundary. I, I know where you're, you're talking. Nicole, can we um, just identify it as a presumptive vernal pool and put the uh, the buffer zone in, you know, pending verification um, in the spring? That way there, if the owner of the property wants to propose some type of development, they know, you know, what kind of the, you know, what the limitations are, I guess is what I'm saying, right? Um, yes. Um, well, yeah, I guess that's the way you would do it according to your bylaw. As yeah. Your bylaw is written. Through, through the chair? Yeah, Don, go ahead. If, if, it, if there's nothing shown on the plan, we're only approving what's, what's delineated. So, um, that's not to say that if the vernal pool isn't shown, you know, it's typically shown as a potential vernal pool. Hence, we're not, you know, saying it is or it isn't. It's, it needs more review. I don't see anywhere where they're even calling out a PVP. So we wouldn't necessarily, if we issued an anorad by saying that there isn't, we're only approving what's, what's shown. And so potential, again, if a vernal pool isn't shown on the plan, that doesn't mean we can't call it back in a future NOI, correct? Matt? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I think to be safe, I would probably at least want to have a finding of fact in the ORAD that says something to that effect. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be depicted on the plan necessarily, Matt. We just need to... Uh, yeah, I mean, if basically you're not making a finding on it, then yeah, I guess it doesn't need to be shown on the plan. You just um, need the narrative. Well, because yeah, because the, the the way the the language in the in the ORAD will say it's we're only approving what's shown on the plan. So if they haven't shown the vernal pool information on the plan, we're not approve we're not approving or disapproving it. Right. Yeah, I just I think. I think it, on, on occasion it, it can be inferred that you know if it's not shown then it doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, I I, I agree, Matt. Um, so I mean, that's a good point, Don. Yeah, because in the, in the past you guys have had it shown as a PVP if there's a question, and we did have a you know odd dry season this year. So and the way the the uh, regs read is. Yeah, we don't just rely on one. You know, we can rely on multiple more than one. actions. Yeah, you can make that a note in the um, the findings. Uh, well, yeah, I we could we could say uh, the commission has uh, considerations and maybe vernal you know vernal pool resource areas on the on the site, but it's not shown on the plan. So we're going to defer it on any other future filings. I mean, I, I'd like to see it on the plan actually as a, as a, I mean, well, let me, let me open it up to the other commission members. I mean, my view is it should be shown on the plan as a potential or, you know, presumptive vernal pool just so, 
you know, at to, to match point. So it's documented, you know, and it's, and it's there. I mean, it'll still be documented in the narrative, but it's on the plan. Uh, but that's my opinion. Let me, let me just open it up to the other commission members to see what they think. So, uh, this is Jim. I agree with you, Jeff. She'll be there. Yeah. And this is Ann Harrow, and, and I agree. I also have a question. I'm finding this very hard to follow. I think it's, it's pretty small. But my question is the 100-foot buffer, is that going around the wetland, or is the wetland to the right, so to speak, of that line? But Ed, there, there, there's actually three separate, three separate wetland resources on the site. There's, on the western side is the BVW closest to 495. Yeah. And that obviously has 100 foot buffer zone really just on the, um, western side. The eastern side buffer zone is going to overlap into the buffer zone related to an isolated vegetated wetland. Um, so that's on the, on the eastern side, on the right side of the plan here. And then there's also an isolated land subject to flooding, um, which is contained within that flagged IVW that's just based on an elevation um, per the regs. Okay, okay, thanks, Matt. And there's a buffer zone all around it. Well, we did, we did look at the vernal pool two times this spring. I did it myself. Um, actually during the delineation and then I came back another time and looked at the vernal pool and then our wildlife um, biologist Dan Wells also did an inspection so realistically we, we looked at the pool three times I understand that you know one season doesn't always you know is not always enough however I mean that's why we didn't list it as a potential vernal pool because at this present time, it didn't have the species to qualify as a vernal pool. I, I hear you, Nicole, but I mean, you know, for the purposes of the resource delineation, uh, why not list it as a potential vernal pool subject to further inspection, you know, next year? And then at least, you know, Mr. DeWolf knows if it is a vernal pool, what the constraints are, you know, if he plans to develop the site, right? So, uh, and if it turns out it's not, then, uh, you know, that works to his advantage, I guess. So but, are, you, are you saying that he can't um, come forward with a notice of intent until after vernal pool season of 2021? No, you can come forward with a notice of intent. But then he'd have to. There's no proposed work in the vernal pool buffer zone. Well, potential vernal pool buffer zone, you know. Yeah. Um, and you want it definitely on the plan and not in the, um, findings? Cause I'll have to, I'll have to get, um, consensus through, uh, on that with the client and I might have to continue the hearing on that part. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I think the other, a couple of the other members of the commission have indicated that they would like to see it on the plan. I, I think that's kind of my view as well. Um, so, you know, if you need to continue it to, to discuss it with Mrs. Mr. DeWolf, um, you know, we, we can do that. Uh, Otherwise, we can just, you know, vote on it subject to um, you submitting a revised plan showing the, you know, potential vertical pool buffer zone. Okay. Um, I'll leave that decision to you. All right. I guess um, I will, I'll continue it just to make sure that um, my client is okay with that. Okay. All right, thank you. So the next hearing is the 28th, so we'll continue it out until the 28th. That I think should give you enough time. Yep, that should be fine. Okay. Could you send an email requesting continuation? Yes, I can do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Hayes. All right, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Bye. 
Okay. Um, so Abbott. Uh, this is 25 parcels on Adam Street, Finch or Fitch Ave and Myrtle Ave. This is a notice of intent, which I need to read to open the public hearing. So let me do that now. The Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 14th, 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m. virtually online to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Abbott Realty Trust for the construction of a roadway and site work associated with the residential subdivision. The location is Elmwood Farms 3, Fitch Ave, Adam Street, and Myrtle Street assessors maps U22 and U23. Okay, do we have a representative for the applicant? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, Rob Truax of GLM. Okay, Mr. Truax, how are you tonight? Good, how are you doing tonight? Good, good thank you. So, you want to give us an overview of the project? To the chair, sure. just, uh, um, uh, I just want to bring up one document. Um, the, uh, does the, uh, we received a, a scope, um, of peer, peer engineering review from, from Beta Group. Um, I was just wondering if the commission wanted to entertain, um, receiving a, a, a peer engineering review on the project. Yeah. So, Don, thank you. Um, I think, uh, we absolutely do need to have a stormwater review by beta of this project. Um, I think we're talking, uh, this was originally before the commission in the early 1990s, correct? Correct, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So, um, in a stormwater review, I think, you know, the, the project's not going to be under the purview of the planning board because it's already been approved, so it's through the Conservation Commission. Um, so I think that is uh, absolutely something we need to take a look at. Um, and I think, did you receive us, you received the scope of work from data, correct, Don? I did. I just got it yesterday. I'm just putting it into the file now. They're estimating um, uh, a fee of uh, $3,950 to... Uh, Review the NOI under the bylaw. For this, yeah, okay. Um, and that's in addition to Lucas's um, fee. Yes, uh, the applicant has submitted a, a a consultant fee under the bylaw for thirty five hundred. So that's going to be entailed in the peer environmental review and for uh, monitoring um, construction throughout the life of the order. So that's what that. Um, consultant fee is this would be above and beyond. We typically get that's an from the planning board on on peer engineering reviews, but this isn't going before the planning board, so this would be outside their purview, and we would need to um, receive funding from the applicant to um, process that. Right. So, Mr. Truax, are you okay with that? Or is your um, if, if I could make a suggestion, Mr. Chairman, before we go and go forward with that. Right now, as you know, this subdivision, is, it's an approved subdivision, as you stated. We have not submitted an updated drainage report. You know, the project was approved under the old plan. The old drainage system is all in place. Um, if I could make a suggestion prior to beta doing a review, it might be in the best interest if maybe myself, Dawn and any one of the board members and, and Phil Parrys could have a sit down meeting to discuss what he would like to review, not so much what he'd like to review, but what he'd like to see from us. And maybe we make suggestions on what we would be doing for a drainage plan and how we'd be handling the existing drainage that's out there. Because the way the project's approved, all the drainage from this site goes to existing drainage basins that were constructed under the old subdivision. You know, one of them's across the street from Blueberry. That's down there. Yeah, right, uh, but, Fitch but, Avenue. But they were constructed in 1991. Right. So everything's so proposed. This is, to go. Is, they were sized probably 
back then for a hundred years ago, and we have the old report. So they're sized properly. My comment would be is they're, they're probably sized to handle a hundred years storm. However, they're probably, they're definitely not constructed to today's standards as far as water quality treatment goes. So I think the biggest thing that we need to look at probably is the water quality of what's coming off the site and where it's going. And maybe, you know, a meeting would be, I talked to Don about this prior to the spec and we had a town, you know, meeting at the town with some of the department heads and we discussed possibly having a meeting with Beta before we have a review done to discuss what we would actually submit to him to be reviewed. So uh, the chair? He has not at this time submitted the drainage study of this, of this site. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. One, I should say. Th through the chair? Yep, go ahead, Don. Uh, maybe the planning board, you know, approved the whole site, but the commission only reviewed the construction of Cary Lane and Blueberry Lane. So we didn't review the whole site. Right. And and I I think um uh, you know I respect uh your recommendation, Mr. Truex, but sitting down with Don and I, we're not stormwater engineers. No, no, I'm not suggesting that, oh. Mr. Chairman. But but, we want to work with you. We want to work with come up with a plan that's gonna work for the project, obviously for the drainage. But because some drainage has already been done, I think it might be it's in our best interest. We'd like to meet with Beta before we do a full-blown drainage report and submit it so we can talk about what really needs to be looked at. We can bring up the, I can bring the old report, we can show it to them, we can have a discussion okay. on it. Data, 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 I'm, I'm not who's going to pay Beta's time for that meeting? Excuse me? Who's going to pay Beta's time for that meeting? We would pay for that time. Okay. Yeah, that would come out of the review fee that we already submitted, Don. And then when he comes up with... He's probably going to have a different budget once we hand him something to, to review. Right now, he has nothing to review. He's only got a budget of $3,900. If we give him a drainage report and some other things to review, that budget may go up. And if that's the case, I, I, you know, obviously we would be willing to, you know, up the budget, whatever it takes. We want to, you know, we want to work with him and with you to come up with the best plan possible for us. But we're not looking to, it, it's just because it was approved so long ago and we didn't really know you know, where we stood. We wanted to get the thing submitted to the commission, get this process going. We thought it'd be best to have a meeting with, with Bader and yourself, Don, and anyone else who wants to sit in on it, come up with a plan of attack and then give him information and then give, he can review it. We don't, we don't have a problem paying for him to sit with us and review at all. We don't, we don't have any issues with that whatsoever. So the chair? Yes, Matt. Um, just one other thought on this, maybe this is a question Mr. Truax can answer. Um, has it, was an as-built done of all the constructed drainage, and was that all accepted by the town and approved? Do we know that it was built to its original design? I, I, I believe it was, Matt. It has been all accepted by the town. There are some old plans out there. So okay, I, I think that would be an, an important part of either but I mean, I, future I, review I, the or, chairman said, Matt, this was this was approved in 1990. I mean, the stormwater regulations today are far different than what they were in 1990, obviously, especially as far as like water quality treatment goes today than what was back then. I understand that, but if we're saying that potentially it was built sized properly for today's standards, I think we, I, I would presume the commission would want some assurances. Mm -hmm. With you know real survey data that that demonstrates that that's really my only point. Well, that that and that's another thing that would probably come out of that meeting, Mr. Chairman. If, you know, he might want us to go out and do an as built of those basins if there isn't one on file before I do a, an actual report. I, I just think it would be beneficial to, to get a have a meeting with him prior to submitting a report. All right. Well, if you feel so inclined to reach out the data and see if they are willing to meet with you guys and get you the information that you're looking for, then you can report back to us and let us know. Um, you know, this is a this is a subdivision, right, that's being proposed um, in town here. And, uh, you know, it's 25 parcels. So, and, I mean, in my view... You know, in Hopkinton, a 25 parcel subdivision and a $3,900 fee to have the stormwater review is very nominal in my view. 
Um, but you know, you can talk with your client, Mr. Truax. Correct. And, uh, and I have a problem with that. Yeah. And, and you know, certainly if, if you want to reach out to beta and see if they're willing to sit down with you guys, um, you know, you can report back to us. Um, you know, and, uh, I, I would do that. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Yeah. This is Jim. Can I make a comment? Yes, Jim. Go ahead. Um, so whatever information you have, whatever design was done is 30 years old. Correct. I'm pretty certain that it is completely different now than it was 30 years ago. With Blueberry having gone in and others. So, um, I would think that you need to start from scratch with this and as Matt suggested, uh, um, verify what is there, but then also look at it's more than just water quality. It's, it's quantity also, which has probably changed in 30 years. And the other thing, by the way, is the notice of intent is for 24 parcels, as it says, or 25. But our notice, but what we're reviewing is simply for the roadways, correct? We're not, we're not, we're not accepting that this is a 24 or 25 lot subdivision. Right. It may have been proposed as that in 1990, but Again, that may have changed. Right? Correct. So that this notice of intent is simply for the roadways and the infrastructure and Correct. not for, and we're not going to, and correct me if I'm wrong, we will not be approving, I know we're going to approve the watts individually, but when we approve the roadway and the infrastructure, it won't necessarily include 24 uh, parcels. Correct. Does that make sense? Yeah, lot, lots yes. that fall within our jurisdiction, obviously. Right. Yes. Yeah, any, right. Uh, this is only to approve the roadway construction. Any lots that fall within the jurisdiction would have to come back for a separate filing. Um, just just as a quick overview, well, I don't know if we want to take this tonight, Mr. Chairman, because we would be providing more information, and also Matt has done a review from Lucas Environmental that we haven't had a chance to respond to. But just if you could pull up on the plan that shows supplemental sheet A1, I just, I just want to highlight a few things for the commission. Sure. Uh, I just wanted to clarify the, the reason it, it's listed as, as that on the agenda, that it's listed as 25 parcels on Adam Street. It's because of what the assessor has it. This is how the assessor lists this area. Correct. It's not one big parcel. So for them to generate the information, this is how the assessors did it. So we just copied this information onto the hearing notice. Correct. So, so Don, so, are these now taxable parcels? That's a question for the assessor's office. We don't get into tax. Yeah, I believe they we are. Just get a, we just get a certified abutters list from the, uh, from the assessor. And if it says, one maple lane, then we write one maple lane. If we get an assessor's list that has 25 parcels on these three streets, that's what we write. That's what we write. That, that's the way it's listed in the assessor's office. They are showing Correct. separate lots. There it is. That, that's what the assessor that's, calls it. Right. So they're so showing separate lots. Are those yep. separate lots currently paying property taxes? Yes. I have no idea. Yes. Okay. Well, well I would assume would so. important to me anyway because what's happening? I would it's assume conceivable so. that some that that one or some of these lots will be unbuildable, for lack of a better word, because that, that, we don't I'd know like the wild ones. Yes, Jim, you're absolutely correct in that. If if, if okay. Don will go to sheet A one, I was going to just go over that real quickly. What what we anticipate? A one, A four, A two. One more, Don. Yep, there you go. Oh, one more. There you go, that's, that one. That's A1. Yes. So if, if you look at this sheet here that's up on the screen, so what we would build would be Fitch Ave would connect to Myrtle Street and then Myrtle out to Blueberry. We would abandon Adams Street. We won't build Adams Street and the lots associated on it. So there's three lots on Adams Street that front on Adams that would not be constructed. Those would basically be abandoned. They'd be open space. And then there's a lot actually right where it says wetlands on Myrtle Street where the crossing is, that right there, that lot would never be built on either. And then the others that were within the buffer would have to be filed. So 
There's technically 24 residential lots within this site. We wouldn't, there's four of them that would never be built on. And that, that that would be part of, you know, eventually if we get to an order of conditions, that could be a condition of approval. If we get to that point where that Adam Street would not be built and that those four lots would not be built on. It'd become just open space. So we'd really be looking at the end result would probably be something in the area of 20 lots. And that may even go, maybe even be, maybe even something less than that based on where the, you know, where we put the replication, how the buffer impacts a couple of those lots up along Pitch Ave. But that, that's what we're ultimately looking at. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, uh, yeah, why don't you, Mr. Truax, if you can talk with Beta um, and just get back to us on, uh, you know, what their assessment is. Um, you know, I think, you know, my sense is that we're going to need to do kind of a comprehensive evaluation, you know, which is... Okay. Yeah, that, that, I, I would like to do that if I could meet with him first. Yeah, and yeah. Then yeah. give you the evaluate, then come up, give you a report, do an evaluation. Yeah, and to and to Jim's point, I mean, you know, this is thirty years old. I mean, I was in diapers thirty years ago, so but well, just about. <laughs> hey, be careful! Be careful! <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a long time. So yeah, it was uh, a long time. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. I that means you could be my kid, like, Jeff. I think you understand what I was we're thinking. Talking. The same thing, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, and we would respond at the same. You know, in the next, if you want, we haven't had a chance to go through Matt's comments. I mean, we just saw them today for the first time, so we would absolutely respond to that as well. Okay. Great. All right. Um, questions or comments from other commission members? I'm good. Jim's good. This is Ed, and I basically have the, the, the same comments that have been mention, mentioned, the same concerns. Um, in particular, the, the crossing of the wetland by the road is uh, presents an issue, not just the lot, but the road itself. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Ed. Um, questions, comments from audience members? Okay, so we'll continue this out until um, July 28th, uh, Mr. Truex, if that's okay. You want, you want to push that out further, Mr. Chairman, to give us some time? We we can. Uh, yeah, the, I don't think the, we won't have anything ready in two weeks. So August 11th or August 25th? Um, I'm thinking August 25th. If we're going to have a meeting and then put together a report and then have them review it, that will give us time to get to the meeting. Okay. If you can just send Don an email, please, requesting the extension to the 25th. Sure. Let's do uh, the documentation purposes. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. You too. All right. Um, So, Mr. Petrosi, are you with us? I'm here. Uh, so, before we get started, Mr. Petrosi, um, I just want to let you know that, uh, let me just make sure Melissa hasn't rejoined. Melissa is not uh, present currently. She had to drop off. So we only have, and Ted, uh, Barker is not present as well. So we have five commission members presently. So I just don't want to go forward with this. Um, I think barring any, um, you know, new information that you have to present to the commission. I think I, you know, I think we're ready for a vote on this. Um, as I said in a previous meeting, 
But, you know, considering two members are not present, uh, just wondering if you want to reconsider pushing this out. Um, yeah, I think that's a major consideration. Um, I, I apologize. Um, no, that's okay. Uh, you know, I appreciate the heads up. But we did, uh, since our last meeting, we did, have been engaged with quite a bit of discussion with uh, town council and uh, DPW. Yeah, and, we did. Uh, we did receive a letter from the uh, DPW today, so I, I did read that. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know if that um, may be of consideration to any of the members that may have not um, been inclined to vote in favor at the last meeting. Um, but barring that, you know, we would ask that this matter be continued so we can have a full board. Um, vote on the on the orders. I think uh, I think that makes sense. Um, and yeah. it, again, I apologize. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. I'm just curious. Do we know now uh, if there's anybody that that already knows they're going to be missing from the next meeting? I'm going to be there. Is there anybody that knows they're not going to be there that we know of? Yeah, I wasn't, I thought Melissa was going to be present for the meeting. Um, I know she was on early and then had to drop off. Um, yeah, but for the next meeting, is everybody, as far as we know, is going to be there? Don, do you have, uh, do you have, do you have any knowledge of anyone who's not going to be at the next meeting on the 28th? Um, no one's told me that, uh, they, they can't make the 28th at this point. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be there on the Thanks. 28th. I'll be there. Mr. Chairman, do we know what the uh, what the rule is regarding uh, a majority vote, or does it need to be a, a majority of the board members of a seven member board, or is it a majority of those present of a quorum at a meeting? It's a majority of the quorum present. It is. Yes. Oh. Huh. What do you? What it would, uh, could we, could we ask for a strong vote or? Uh, unfortunately, no. 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 Um, can commissioners comment on, I don't know if that's a straw poll or not, but comment on how they feel in light of all the information, including the most recent correspondence from UPW director and abutters or neighbors? You're certainly welcome to comment on it. Um, okay. Well, I will then. Um, so, um, I, I don't know if I, I guess I can say that I intend to, uh, approve this application. I think Mr. Petrosi has done everything that we've asked for. I think the engineering is sound and to just sort of echo what, uh, the, the neighbors have expressed in their letters. And what the DPW directors expressed, um, the current plan uh, is going to resolve many issues in that area related to stormwater and runoff on uh, neighboring properties um, and uh, from uh, Leonard Street, which is currently uncontrolled. So I think that um, enough has been done, and I think it's a good plan and approvable by me anyway. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this is Ed. Yes. I have, as, as some know, I have been in a Zoom class that I've been teaching from 10 o'clock this morning until shortly before I got on here. I have not had a chance or an opportunity to read that letter. Um, if it's possible to put that letter up that I could read it now, um, I could be in favor of this, depending on what the letter says. Uh, again, I didn't mean to start any kind of straw poll here, but. Yeah, I, 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 you know, unless Mr. Petrosi wants to move forward with a vote, I, um, well, I, I certainly, certainly can comment on the letter. Um, I think the DPW has endorsed, basically endorsed the plan, you know, with conditions. Um, so that kind of sums it up, but certainly, Don, if you want to put it up so Mr. Harrow can read it. And then if, uh, 
you know, we'll let Mr. Petrosi decide if he wants to continue this out or if he'd like to vote on it tonight. Um, you know, and there's, there's also some administrative items, Mr. Petrosi, that we have to take care of as well. Sure. You know, yeah, if you can check your email, I, I sent it out to all the members tonight, uh, today. Mr. Chairman, I'm I hoping to look up the regs on, on voting. I, I have no pro, I have no uh, issues with continuing this to the next meeting. That would give all the members a chance to review all the correspondence that have uh, come in from the DPW and, um, whoever, na whatever neighbors have uh, submitted their, uh, correspondence. So if that give, it'll give everybody an opportunity to review everything thoroughly and then hopefully we can move ahead at the next meeting with a full contingent. Yeah, the letter just came in at like three o'clock today. Yeah, yeah, I just got it myself. So, um, but I think, uh, I think that would probably be the most, uh, prudent Direction at this point, just to uh, go one more meeting, and hopefully we get all the members present, and um, and we can take a vote on all these things going forward. Yeah, and I I think you know to to your point, uh, Mr. Petrosi, you know Mr. Harrow hasn't read the letter yet, right. um, and I don't know how the other commission members. You know, it came in late in the day, as you said. I I did read it, so. Um, yeah, I, I, as I said, you know, it, I think it's, it's, uh, you know, they endorsed, uh, the, uh, you know, what you're proposing to do out there in terms of the stormwater, um, mitigate, uh, stormwater, uh, mitigation. So, you know, I, I thought that was positive. Uh, but I'd like the other members to get a chance to, you know, sure. take a look at that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, when would be the next available uh, meeting? The twenty eighth is that what I was hearing you say? Or that, that's correct. Yep, July twenty eighth. Okay. So, I, Don, I'll send you an email continuing to. Well, I have the commission has to approve continuing it to the twenty eighth, and um, oh, it's two weeks from tonight, right? So, yep. if that's okay with the commission, I'd request the continuance till July twenty eighth. Okay. Yep. That's fine. And, um, I think, uh, uh, you know, as, as you said, hopefully we'll have all of the, uh, we haven't heard from any members that aren't planning on being on, uh, or attending the meeting on the 28th. So I think we should have a full contingent. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. Petrosi. Thank you. You think we'll be having some in-person meetings soon or no? Uh, not for the foreseeable future, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you know, with things looking like they're starting to spike, um, you know, we're just going to... Everybody's staying cautious. Yeah, we're just going to, you know, be cautious and uh, I think continue the remote meetings for at least another couple months. Okay, fabulous. Okay, thank um, you. I just miss you guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so I think the, what the commission has to vote to continue, and then uh, I'll send an email to uh, Don to confirm. Yeah, we don't. We don't have to vote to continue. It's uh, you, you put the request in uh, okay. verbally. So just send, if you can send the email to Don to formalize that, that would be great. Right. I'll send it out in ten minutes. Okay. Great. Th thanks a lot, people. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. Okay. Um, so Bryant Zero Downey Place. This is a continuation of a notice of intent for a single family home construction. We have a representative for the Bryants. Uh oh. Steve Bryant's here. He's here. Oh. I don't know where he went, but he's, I'm his daughter. I live next door. I'll be the one living in the house. So I don't know if his audio is bad or what, but I don't know. Oh gosh. Uh, who am I speaking with now? 
He's here. Hold on. Steve Bryan is here. I see him. Maybe he's not here. Hold uh, on. Okay. So I'm speaking with uh, Melinda, his daughter? Yes, I am. Yes, and I'll be the one living in the house, so. Okay. He's muted. Uh, is he muted? I don't see... Oh, is, what's his what's his telephone number? Is it five four four eight two two six? Might be his business name. Yes. yes. Oh, here he is. Can you hear me? He's muted again. Okay. Well. All right. Uh, there we go. I don't want to be. Dad. I, I'll go with the computer and hopefully it works. All right. It's working. We, yeah, we got you now. Okay, okay. so can you just give us a, us a call, uh, overview, overview. That would be that great. great. Okay. So uh, we have the plan that we revised based on the last meeting we had in July. And I'm under the impression that that has been provided to you guys. I don't know if you have it available. It's okay. Looks like Don may have dropped off. All right, I'm back. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, do you have the revised plan provided by Connor Stone? I can't hear him. He's, he's muted. He's muted. I'm not. We, no, uh, Dad, you're uh, not. I, I'm muted. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry about oh. that. Um, so we do have the plan. I'm just, I think Don, for some reason, has dropped off. Um, which is problematic. because I may be able to put it up if that's... Actually, I don't know how to do that. Let me, okay. So all we do now is look at each other? <laughs> well, Melinda's trying to bring up the... Uh, the oh, plate. I am? I Okay, oh, I thought on. you were. I'm sorry, I, I'm not quite sure how to do that because I'm on my iPad, so let me okay, see. Okay, so, so Matt, why don't we do this? What what were your comments, Matt? Um, so, I don't have the plan in front of me. I can try and bring up the plan. Um, plan. Um, I might be able to as well. Hold on. But I, I think it appeared as though they had pulled the house design back uh, and I'm sure Steve can speak to this. Yes. Um, as the commission had requested, um, and, and from my perspective, I think the only kind of open question was the fate of that little shed that's at the the edge of the lake. Because um, the plan wasn't updated to note if that was still going to be removed. Because uh, I know there was a discussion about it being removed and in its place, some uh, pavers being put there. I know the commission had some concerns about um, what that was potentially going to turn into in the future. So if you want to speak to that, um, Mr. Bryant. So so we, I will, well, thank you, Matt. We moved the house out of the 50, as you guys requested at the last meeting. Um, we've, at, we added a rip wrap that probably on both sides for the, um, and we've eliminated the pavers um, based on the conversation at the last meeting, and we're going to just keep the keep it grass. Um, uh, we've we've uh, and we're going to keep the shed um, there since we won't. We're going to move the limit of the work line back, as you can see from the picture. Thanks, Matt. Don Don is actually back with us. Yeah, Don's back. That's not me. Uh, excellent. Sorry about that. I lost Bro. internet connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was having my own set of problems earlier. 
So that's what we have uh, have come back with. All right. Um. Uh... So, so I guess is the shed staying or is that going? The shed is going to. We'd like the shed to stay. Is this? It's the storage, and you know, you, if we're going with grass. We'll have a place to, you know, put at least some lawn tools. Right, and that's all previously disturbed area down there. Yes, correct? indeed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's fine. Uh, so let me just open it up to comments, questions from the commission members. Uh, Mr. Jim, I just have one question right now, which is there appears to be an existing tree in what will be a deck, but it's not labeled as to be removed. Will that be removed? That, yes, that tree will be removed. It's the only tree we will be removing. and. Uh, I, I've planted about four around the area this year, and hopefully they'll make up for it. So on the plan, we should show that it's to be removed, either, you know, show it uh, uh, a revision or note in our conditions. I'm, I'm sorry, Jim. Can you repeat that, please? I'd like to see either that the plan shows that trees to be removed, even though it's pretty obvious, or that it be at least referenced in the conditions. Whichever okay. way. It's part of the record. Okay. Whichever way you prefer. Yeah, Through the you, chair? Yeah, go ahead, Don. Uh, yeah, usually when you have an erosion control limit of work listed here, you would expect, you know, everything here to remain. Everything here would be you know, um, developable. Yeah, so I think it's inferred, Jim, you know, since it's within the erosion control barrier, I think it's, uh, um, you know, I think it's inferred that it'll it'll be removed as part it of could, the project. Yeah, I mean, it could, stay or, it could stay or go, but, you know, in essence, it's in the limit of work area. Which is the dash line. Yeah. Okay. Correct. All right. Fine. Okay. Uh, yes. Go ahead, Carrie. All right. Um, can you just explain a little bit more about um, how that back deck that's in the buffer, like what your plans are for how you're going to install that and what's going to be underneath it? So um, that is... Majority of um, stone wall that is there that was in the 80s. Um, and what's going to be under there uh, will be simply grass up to the wall, which would be the foundation at that point. This is Jim again. Do you have a question? So I, I don't know if this goes to Terry's question, uh, or Melissa, whoever that was. Uh, this is going to be a deck on piers, not on a foundation, not a place concrete, right? That's correct. So, okay. Deck on piers. And I, and I guess, um, as with the tree, we assume that the, uh, the existing stone walls are coming out because they're within the limit of work. Well, they're, they're actually going to be, um, we're going to replace them with some new, nice stone walls that, you know, look uh, presentable. These ones here are pretty old and, yeah. and yeah, they're just not well done. Okay. Uh, do I try to have one more comment? Yep. Um, All right, so you guys are increasing a lot of the impervious area out here, which wasn't before with the house and the driveway, and um, many of the projects along this road have had a lot of issues with runoff, especially um, during construction when they're cutting, they're finding a lot more water and foundation drains are needed later. So I just want to make you guys aware of that so that you pay extra attention during construction because there will be a good bit of time where, like, the whole, almost the whole property will be disturbed and it won't be, like, stabilized for a while. So just... Um, 
as best you can phase it with the weather and just be very cognizant because otherwise it's all going to wash right into the lake. All right. No, we will not let that happen. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good point, Carrie. Thank you. Um, okay. So do we have questions or comments from audience members? Okay. I think we're ready for a vote on this one. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if I can get a motion to uh, close. Hey, Jeff, yes. Jeff, I'm sorry. Jim, with a late, late question. Yeah. The existing garage, is that to be removed? Or is that remaining? See, I'm used to plans saying existing garage to remain or yeah, that's to be gonna, removed. That's going to remain. That's going to okay, remain. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent for zero Downey Place um, as discussed. This is Carrie. I'll make the motion. Okay, Carrie's making the motion. Is there a second? Janine, I'll second. Janine is seconding, and we'll go through the roll call. Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Aye. Janine? Hi. And Jeff's and I, um, Melissa and Ted are not present, so uh, the motion passes. So I think you're all set. Good luck with the project. Thank you, folks. Greatly appreciate it. Have okay. a good night. Yep. Thank Bye -bye. you. Have a good evening. You too. Okay. Actually, Melissa is in the waiting room, so I'm going to let her back in now. For the record, Anna. Thank you. Melissa, you're back with us? I'm back. All right. Mr. Petrosi continued out to the next meeting. Uh, oh, he did. Okay. Yeah, he was disappointed you weren't present. So, okay. Uh, so we have some work session items done. Hopefully we can, we can make these quick. Going on uh, two and a half hours here. I have, no, and I have no air conditioning in my office. So, uh, I should be outside. <laughs> so we have a couple documents that were signed. And, and issued. Yep. And we had the order for Franklin Road and we had that uh, determination for West Elm Street. Yeah. Okay. We've got a, a couple few new. new yeah, we got a few new applications um, that uh, some will right. be on for the twenty eighth. Some will be pushed off until the next meeting. They didn't make the deadline for getting to the paper. Um, Excuse me, Don. One second. Yes. So, speaking of orders of conditions, how are we do? How are we signing orders of conditions in this virtual world we live in? Yeah. Just First like this. How, how, how are we doing that? How is it? So, for example, I would not be signing the Franklin Road order conditions, uh, for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is I wasn't here for the vote. So when it goes out as approved, is my name on there? Yep. This is how all of them are going. I, cause I didn't know who would be absent, who would be not. So I took an electronic copy of at least uh -huh. seven because this is just a ministerial act. It doesn't, wow. it doesn't reflect your vote, you know? Okay. So, so it's basically just a, a copy that I'm laying on, on top. Yes. Yeah, you're just signing the order of conditions. It's not an acknowledgement. No, I get that. Coaching. I get that. But I would not have signed it if we were, in, if we're doing it in the real world. Yeah. And that's the problem. We're not in the real world. So, so I guess I will ask if, uh, I don't know. We can take my initials off. Because then we, we have to write in who, you know, how, how many, you see how, see how anal they get? We got to write in how many people signed it. And then if you wanted me to black out your name, I'd, I'd take a black marker. I don't, I don't know how the heck I'd do it. And then after. Well, you could use, you could use whiteout or you could, uh, right, throw a line right. through it. Well, this, line this, through it, well, initial it. Right. But this was already issued, Don, correct? Right. That's, so, so well, if it's been issued, forget it. It's moved. Right. All right, never mind. But, yeah, the question was how, how do we issue it? And 
this is how we do it. We we take a piece of paper, we you know lay it on top, make a scan, work it into the other doc. It's a pain in the ass, uh, basically. You know, um, <laughs> it's something it doesn't signify approval, right? Right. It's just a ministerial act. You have to have at least a member, at least a majority uh, signing the document. Yeah, I get that. But it's, well, not, a reflection of it's, not. Voted. it's not a reflection of the vote. So if you, no, you know, I get that too. If you, voted that. To, if you voted to deny it, it doesn't mean so it. It's a practical matter. If I was to deny something, I wouldn't sign the order of conditions. I understand what it is, but I would not sign the order of conditions if, if I had voted against them. Okay. Anyway, it's fine I mean, the way it is. But it's if you fine. guys want to go forward, let me know ahead of time. Because like, we voted to do this two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And if you said, by the way, I don't want to sign that, then I would I would write, okay, six, and I would have put a whiteout or yeah. a blackout through who's oh. ever... Whoever said it, I, I can't. Right. Let's well, carry. Well, regrettably, that was the call that, that was the call that I never finished. Right. Anyway, All right, that's fine. I'm I'm fine with it. Let's go on. Yeah. So if you don't if you don't want to sign something, just let Don know. Um, you know, after the meeting. Yeah. Well, I'm good with everything right now. Okay. All right. Uh, so just. So with the, so we're discussing work session items number two, the mass DOT. So just every, so everyone is aware, uh, the mass DOT is expecting the commission to deny their filing. Um, uh, so they expect that, uh, we requested, uh, environmental review and engineering review, uh, or peer review. You know, with Beta and Lucas, they denied it. So they are not planning on paying consulting fees uh, to have our consultants review it on the town's behalf. Uh, so that's really kind of, they're expecting us to deny it anyways. Uh, but that will be, I think, the primary basis for us denying the project is that they won't allow us to have our consultants to review it. So just uh, FYI for everyone. Okay, uh, so Rosillo to Deer Run, notice of intent, another new application that was filed. Uh, the draft minutes for March 10th and April 28th. Those both look fine to me, Don. Did everyone get a chance to look at those and yeah. review them? Any comments? There, no comments. So, Okay, so let's get a, if I can get a motion to approve uh, both sets of minutes, please. Very this is Ed, I'll make the motion. Ed made the motion and a second. Very second. Very second. We'll go through the roll call. Melissa? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Aye. Neen? Aye. And Jeff's an aye. And Ted is not present. Okay. Um, moving along. Uh, so we have an exemption request for uh, halt for zero Franklin Road, Don. Yeah, I don't know if there's anyone out there. Um, I think give Mr. Us Mr. Gasser's on the line. Mr. Gasser, yeah, good evening. Good evening. Uh, you want me to go through it? Sure. Okay, short but, so, short but uh, sweet, if you don't mind. Pardon? Short but sweet, if you don't short mind. Short but sweet. Okay, well, you've yeah, seen right. several of these kinds of things before. This is uh, another one. Uh, identical yeah. kinds of boardwalks that we want to put in uh, Brokala Conservation Area. There's five altogether, various lengths, uh, same construction as before. Uh, there's there's pictures in the uh, in the document that shows the crossings. They're all on uh, kind of muddy, rocky, annoying parts of the trail. Uh, they don't cross any water or streams or anything like that. 
So is a Boy Scout doing this for his Eagle Scout project? Uh, we don't know exactly. Uh, we don't have any. The Boy Scouts aren't doing projects now. <laughs> So, All right. Uh, we'll right. probably just do this with volunteer work. We've got a number of trail stewards that can help. Okay. Um, okay, that sounds good. I don't have an issue with it. Uh, any questions or comments from the commission? No. That's an exemption request. We need, don't need to vote on it. Uh, when you're doing the work, Mr. Gassel, let me know, and I, uh, you know, I'll try to get out there to help you guys do it. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Come on, shoot me. Help. And I would as well. Okay, Ed. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have another informal discussion with faults for the ONM plan for 71 Franklin Road. Uh, yes. So, uh, the, uh, as you know, Seaboard Solar has promised to donate the open space uh, on the property that's going to contain the solar array to HALT. And uh, when they do that, we're going to inherit the pond on the property and the dam that's over there. And that dam has an existing uh, board of conditions uh, that uh, include a ongoing conditions that include a dam operation maintenance plan. That Liberty Mutual right. agreed to do. Yeah, uh, it's kind of daunting for us, and we think we could do something different uh, that will would be equally good uh, to keep that dam uh, maintained adequately. And uh, and I I want to put let's see, it's Chuck Chuck Chuck's there. I want to Chuck to talk about the uh, proposed uh, or uh, operation and maintenance plan. We just want to get an idea of this whether this would be adequate substitute. So go ahead, Chuck. Yes. Hello? Am yeah. I coming yeah. through? Yep. Yeah. Hello? Yes. yes. We can we can hear you. Mr. Okay. Clark. Um yeah, the uh uh the current situation appears that the uh although the uh, initial repair and maintenance that was required uh, in 2017 uh, uh, was done. Uh, there has been no other ongoing maintenance as required. Um, so the dam itself, uh, which, oh, wow, my screen works. Okay, whoop. Uh, uh, um, uh, there is woody growth, which is not advisable on an earthen dam, mm -hmm. uh, uh, recurring. Um, the water level of the pond has been raised above the original design water level. Uh, these, there are stop logs at the outlet structure, which is here, uh, that have been raised to the point where it's forcing overflow from what should have been simply an emergency spillway here. Uh, those are conditions that should be rectified uh, as soon as possible because it weakens the emergency spillway. Um, uh, in the long term, uh, what we are proposing is uh, what is uh, within the capability of our volunteer labor, and that is continuing removal of woody growth from the dam, uh, uh, <clears throat> the mowing of the trail, which exists now uh, across the dam, um, and mowing as necessary to suppress other woody growth or invasive species on the dam. Um, the, the uh, I don't know if, uh, I think uh, Don probably has our, the text of our proposal, uh, but, okay. <clears throat> uh, yes, this is, the text of our proposed uh, 
amendment to the uh, certificate of compliance requirement for uh, submission of an operation maintenance plan. So this was submitted to Seaboard Solar for Maury, yes? No, no. Uh, it, in theory, Seaboard Solar would be responsible for implementing the Liberty Mutual Operation and Maintenance Plan, I think. Uh, we're just looking forward to a time, and we don't know when that would be, a year from now, whenever the project is done, and they give us the land, what we would have to do to maintain it. Okay. And right. So the uh, the uh, plan shown on the screen now is what um, was approved. Uh, well, I, I guess that's a question. Was it, in fact, approved? It's in the commission's files. Uh, in response, apparently, to the commission's requirement for a submission of an operation maintenance plan, um, the uh, this plan does effectively uh, comply with the state's requirements for a much larger or higher hazard dam as well. Uh, our dam is our dam. Well, <laughs> Mitchell. <laughs> Uh, uh, currently Seaboard's dam um, is not uh, uh, a dam under jurisdiction of the state's requirements. Uh, uh, the, the basic relaxation, if any, that we require or we request is uh, the frequency of mowing. Um, the critical thing for an earthen dam is that woody growth be uh, uh, restricted uh, and because that has the potential in the long term of uh, root penetration, wind throws, uh, and uh, uh, other uh, impediments to the integrity of the dam. So that's why uh, we are proposing something that is within the capacity of Holt's volunteer labor force to maintain the safety of the dam. So you're proposing to mow at what? Once per year, twice per Not year? Not even mow per se. Remove woody growth. Okay. And with mowing permitted, if we find there's an area where really that appears to be merited, uh, mowing also for the uh, maintenance of a trail across the dam. Uh, one of the issues right now is because of the rise in water level uh, uh, well above the design elevation, water is flowing across the emergency spillway, the earthen emergency spillway. Uh, that's a perfectly legitimate design of emergency spillway. Uh, but typically the design water level is about a foot below that elevation. So you can maintain a dense sod cover on the emergency spillway in the event of emergency flows. Uh, right now, uh, there is seepage, uh, no, even D flow going over the emergency spillway and that ultimately can erode a real channel, which is then subject to erosion. Okay. Um, so I actually haven't gotten a chance to take a look at the proposed um, O&M plan that you guys submitted. I apologize. Um, I don't know if Matt or Don got it or any of the other commission members got a chance to take a look at it. And if, I mean, I think it seems reasonable to me um, what you're proposing. Uh, but again, I haven't looked at it in uh, a lot of detail, Mr. Dalshi, so I, I apologize. Um, but the, the, the chief difference between the old one and the one we're proposing is the three times a year mowing. That's yeah. too daunting for us to 
to mow the entire embankment of the earth and dam. I mean, my, my sense is if you mow it once a year, or you clear out the woody debris once a year, that's probably sufficient. Um, but, you know, Don, uh, I don't know if Matt's still with us. Is that, I'm still there. Matt, does that seem reasonable to you? Yeah, I mean, I think the, I think the O&M plan that you guys approved was what Liberty Mutual had developed and submitted. Um, why they called for mowing three times a year, I don't know what the basis of that was. Um, typically mowing once a year should keep the woody, the woody vegetation down. Um, yep. so that, you know, if everything else is the same, um, my, my only question on it was, um, you know, as dams can be kind of risky things to acquire. And potentially it's a <laughs> prior. Um, so I presume you guys have kind of vetted all that with the powers that be in the town. Um, you know, the other option would be that would make for some great future restoration project to uh, get rid of the dam and restore it to a natural condition. If, if, if something happens to it and it's beyond our capacity to repair, that could actually happen. Uh, right, it, since it has been maintained in 2018, it's in pretty good shape now, except for these issues that Chuck pointed out. Uh, we don't think there's any downstream uh, impact of any significance. Uh, right. Mostly the water flows under a culvert on uh, Cross Street. Uh, you said powers that be in town. Who, who are those? <laughs> I don't know. I don't live in town, so I'll let you guys uh, yeah, determine that. But just a talk, you know, I would talk to Norman and Elaine uh, okay. to understand, you know, what the liability is that the town's uh, incurring. You know, we're taking on the responsibility for maintaining the dam. The chair. Yeah, go ahead, Don. Sorry. The the, the town's not acquiring it. Uh, a, a private land trust is acquiring it. Right. 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 So it's it, you, you know. Bob. So basically, if, if the dam fails and water cascades down, you know, we'd have a problem with the erosion mess, but we don't, you know, and then if, if it, if it damages other private property when it goes off Alt's land, that would be on them to deal with who's ever, you know, damaged in a civil manner. Right. Right. Thanks for clarifying that, Don. And through the chair? Yeah. The, uh, 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 the gentleman was talking about whether or not, you know, he wasn't quite sure what, you know, what the situation was. The, uh, order of conditions and the ongoing conditions fairly clear. O&M plan detailing the schedule for ongoing to prevent future shrub tree growing, in, uh, with, uh, the DCR's, you know, Office of Dam Safety recommendation submitted for review and approved by the commission or the conservation staff. <coughs> that did happen. Um, I think we did run it by the CONCOM, but going forward, you know, anyone can revise the, the plan and as long as it's still in accordance with the DCRO recommendations, we wouldn't have a problem saying, okay, we, we don't want this one anymore. We want this one or we want the next one, you know, basically as long as it doesn't have, as long as it's not in, in conflict with the order of conditions, and the recommendations, I, I don't see the conservation staff or the commission having an issue with it. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I think that's why the order was, you know, conditioned open. So as things change, you know, the, the O&M plan could be a living, breathing document that could, you know. An evergreen type document. Yep. Right. Uh, so my procedural question is, would this be mean a, um, uh, uh, an adoption of the, uh, our proposed plan, uh, uh, referenced, uh, to the, uh, certificate of compliance or how, how procedurally do we proceed? 
the, the commission, you know, is a, I think they want a little more time to look at it. Fine. Um, yep. from what I've heard. And, um, if the commission, um, says, yeah, this is great. This will be put on file and this will, this will be noted as outdated, not the current one. Yep. This would be unless, and then they might have some suggestions for you and, um, we'll go from there. Yeah, as, as I said, um, uh, Mr. Dosh, I didn't really uh, have a chance to take a real thorough look at it. I kind of perused it, but I, I'd like to take a you know a little bit more of a uh, vigorous look at it, if you will. Um, maybe we can uh, continue the discussion at the next meeting. For the chair, go ahead, Ed. This is Ed. I just probably slightly outside the purview of the discussion, but the comment was made that there, there, the logs in the spillway need to be taken out to lower the water level to keep the water from flowing over the emergency spillway. And I wonder if there is a plan to do that. If the water is, you know, up to those boards, um, there's a lot of force behind the boards. I'm just, I'm just wondering. That would that. be up to seaboard, uh, Aha. <laughs> well, if if I may, the uh, the current water level is not in compliance with the uh, design that was submitted. Right. That's what I understood. Like, I guess my question is, how do you how do you make it right with the water up on those boards? From a from a technical point of view, yeah, uh, you remove uh, whichever of the boards are too high, and you adjust it. Just it just seems with a whole lot of water behind the board, there's a lot of force that makes it difficult. It's actually very easy. It, it can be done if you uh, remove uh, if you lift the board uh, oh. incrementally, let the water flow under it. Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. I mean, this is off topic, so. Yep. Well, Jeff, I, this is Jeff. Can I ask a question? I don't think that's off topic, guys. Uh, Jeff, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Jim. This, uh, you know, Trump or Maury, have you, have you actually taken title to this parcel? No, it won't no. happen until no. the board gets the, uh, gets the, uh, uh, certificate of, uh, Occupancy, I guess, or something like that. Well, so, as far as I'm concerned, the current owner of the property before transferring it to you should be taking care of all of this stuff. Possibly. Why would you accept? We, we would like that to happen, then we wouldn't have to do this work at the start. Uh, I, I don't know yeah, how. You should, be, you should be given, you should be given that as something that is compliant with the existing O&M plan or specifications, and I think you would want them to do that as, as much as you can negotiate that. But uh, we, we have asked them I would about certainly this, negotiate they haven't that. Responded. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I well, mean, okay, I mean, we're not going to solve this tonight. Uh, you know, Seaboard Solar is responsible currently, I guess, uh, not HALT, so it's... Um, you know, the, so why aren't we making them bring this into compliance? I guess we, you know, we can reach out to them. Well, reaching out and requiring it is sort of two different things. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's. I mean, they acquired the parcel. But somebody acquired this whole thing from Liberty Mutual. And then somebody subdivided or proposed, I don't know if this has actually been recorded, um, but when somebody bought the product from Liberty Mutual, they're responsible for whatever what Liberty Mutual was responsible for. If that included maintaining the dam um, and other things, then the new owner assumes that responsibility. Through the, through the chair, is, is it within the purview of the CONCOM to 
knock on Seaboard's door and say, come fix this, or is this some other town body that needs to do that, or town official? Through, through the chair? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, go ahead, Don. I think it is within our purview, but go ahead, Don. Yeah, you know, I guess you can ask them, well, you know, um, we got an ongoing condition. Can you tell us the condition of the, uh, of the, the dam, you know? And certainly ask them that. Well, how about we just say it's our understanding that it is not conforming. It's not compliant, and you need to fix it. I mean, I don't understand just sort of... Yeah, we can, we can, we can, we can reach out to them and ask them to maintain it. Um, so I, I think that that's something that we yeah, it's, a, it's an ongoing we can, condition. We can we can request it. So they own the property; it's an ongoing condition. So we we have that uh, purview. But, you know, and it's not like we have a, a condition that says you have to give us a, a a report on your maintenance every year. That wasn't worked into it. You know, right. just for what it's worth, it does not appear that Liberty Mutual did this either at the time they gave the property to, uh, sold the property to Seaboard, because the woody growth we see there is older than that. So, yeah, we can bring it to their attention that is the, is the O&M plan for the Earthen Bank. It doesn't say anything about the water level. It just talks about keeping the dam strong. Yeah, can we, can we just put a letter together, Don? Just uh, uh, to Seaboard, letting them sure. know what, the, what their responsibility is, and that you know our expectation is is that they're going to maintain. Yeah. Them. Sure. Just uh, to clarify that regarding the water level, that is not a part of the current uh, uh, O and M plan. That's simply an observation uh, of the discrepancy between the uh, approved plan and the current conditions, and uh, a caution from my experience with dams that the uh, emergency spillway should not serve as a principal spillway, but should have approximately a foot of freeboard if possible. I assume that's in the guidelines of the um, Office of Dam Safety. So, yeah, I think we would still be looking for a dam to be, even though it's, 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 it's not um, registered with the Office of Dam Safety because it's not large enough, I think we'd still want to use their guidelines. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. So we can just submit, uh, you know, send a letter to Seaboard Solar, you know, citing that, Don. Yep. And, uh, you know, letting them know that we expect it to be maintained and if they can report back to us, you know, on, um, you know, what they plan to do. Sure. Okay. Uh, does that make sense, Mr. Gasser, Mr. Dodge? Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Um, so, Don, the DPW request, I mean, can we table that to the next meeting? Spend three yep. Hours. yep, we'll do that. So I, I suggest that we kind of adjourn the meeting right now. Um, I'll second that motion. Uh, unless, of course, someone is really, you know, wants to continue going, then <laughs> we can soldier on. But do you have any motion? Mr. Chairman, as I said, I've been zooming since the morning. I'm way past done. All right. So, Ed, that's a second. And we'll just <laughs> go, through the, uh, we'll go through the roll call. Melissa. Melissa's an I. Jim. I. Uh, Carrie's an aye. Aye. Yeah, Janine. Aye. Ed. Aye. Jeff's an aye. All right, guys. Have a good night. Good night.
Thank you. Right now. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Stay well. Bye. Good night.